Welcome to the More Gem Show. I'm Steve Moriarty, your host, and with me tonight are my two sons, Michael, who's in charge of this production. Hello, Michael. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming tonight. Uh, it's good to see everyone here. And Jeffrey, who's in charge of our chat tonight. How are we doing, everybody? I am back. I wasn't here last week, right? It was just you and Mike, or last month. Uh, it was earlier when we did the... Uh, what just the unboxing. Yes, unboxing. Yes, it was just uh, yes. Yeah, me and me and Steve took care of that one. So. Yes, you guys did. Did a great job, too. Yeah. I was kind of jealous not being here, but it Yeah, happened. we missed you. Yeah, we missed you. Yeah, so. So tonight uh, we're featuring the stones from our last trip to Tucson. And uh, we'll talk a little about that. And if, Jeff, you want to talk about. Um, Break right into everything? Sure. And then we'll. <laughs> Do a little chat about the Tucson, or you want to do that first? Um, what do you want to do? Is it fresh in your memory right now? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so, uh, what is Tucson? You know, Tucson is the largest gem mineral show in the world. Uh, we say show, but it's actually, I think, maybe forty-five shows currently. So they're spread all over town and. Uh, they vary quite a bit. Some are bead shows, some are fossil shows, some are mineral shows, some are gem shows. Um, and uh, for us, a lot of the show goes on behind the scenes because there's a lot of dealers from all over the world. And uh, not all of them show. I mean, uh, there are many, many of them that just walk around the show and sell to the dealers. And these are a great deal of our focus, particularly before the show, because we get there almost a week before the shows start. And uh, we're trying to hit our suppliers, uh, people that we've used overseas regularly. We're trying to hit them early um, before anybody else sees them. That's our goal. And, and our primary suppliers, we do see them first. And and it, it works out real well for us. And then uh, later, um, we go to the other shows and uh, see what's new and what's going on. Um, so we had a great time this, this year. Um, even though Jeffrey didn't come this year. Yeah, Jeffrey. He's, he's bailing out on us. He did. He had a little yeah. ski trip, huh? That's yeah. what you're doing over there, Jeff? Yep, yep. Fortunately, around the same time, I had planned the ski trip quite a quite a bit to Breckenridge, so me and a few buddies. But uh, you guys were in the warm weather. We were in the cold, but we were close. Yeah. Well, we were like one state over, two states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looked like you had a good time, though. I was there in spirit. Yeah, we missed you. Yeah, so it was a great show. Uh, we did a lot of buying. I, I spent a record amount of money this year uh, to my wife's chagrin. Hello, Nancy. Um, and hello, Dana, my daughter. Um, and so, hello to everybody else in the chat. Yes, and hello to everybody else. Including hello, Glenna, Eileen, Eileen, and Glenna and uh, The Blur, Sean, uh, Max, JDH, BD. Hey, Ann. How are you, Ann? Uh, the Dell Auto Collector, Yamil, <laughs> Linda, James, Welch, uh, and I think that was everybody I see right now, but uh, whoever else is here, what's going on, everybody? So, um, yeah, but I'm sorry, I, you broke yeah, into yeah, that, and no, then I just, I was just distracted me. I know, I saying what's up my chat. Train of thought. So, Tucson, though. So, back to Tucson. Yes, you spent, so. spent a record amount, but you got a record of amazing gems yeah, too. Yeah, we did get a lot of stones, you know, and and this year, you know, we a little more focus on some cut stones because I have a lot of rough that uh, I need to get to and and we're working on that this year as far as uh do a lot more cutting. We're trying to focus more um on certain things and uh, cutting out some things that that uh, aren't aren't as effective for us, and so hopefully next show my plan is that every stone I show you will be something we cut. You know, it's uh, I don't know if it's possible or not, but hopefully I can get Michael cutting some more, and um, and and we'll have a, a full show of of just stones that we've cut. But tonight uh, we're featuring a lot of stones that I bought in Tucson, and and you know. When I say buying rough, you know, it, it's it's great to buy rough. Our margins are a little better. But finding <clears throat> rough for all the different stones and having the variety is what's difficult. Uh, certain <clears throat> types of rough are available. 
Um, other things are just not available in the rough. So if you don't buy it cut, you're not going not gonna to have it to sell. <clears throat> so uh, that that's where we focus a little more on cut stones this time. And we'll be showing you uh, a lot more cut stones that we didn't cut but are beautifully cut and, and some rare and unusual stones tonight. So we've got a pretty wide variety of stones. We've got 25 to that we're going to feature tonight, but I think we have another 20 stones yeah, there's that are least, discounted uh, that you also see. Um, there will be... There, so uh, the, the show stones, they're all in the same collection. So basically we just compiled everything. Steve, he just, he wanted to get everything that he could give you guys out on the website. So there's got to be, there's probably around 45 stones total. Maybe that that's, I could be a little over, but um, tonight we're going to show you 25 on this show, including a few hidden gems. It looks like we have five total hidden gems, which um, once those pop up, you'll see that it's a little bit better discount than the 15% off. Um, but yeah, they're all under the same collection. They're all, you know, you can use coupon code JEWEL for any of them. And you can get 15% off everything. Uh, I think Jeffrey's still working on... No, they, you, they you should get, be up. Okay, I Jeffrey's... Was being, I was kind of amused by the little, your little head yeah, down there. The you video. like that? <laughs> That's a new, a new addition to the show. <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get a, a camera to work, so I figure I have a little no, pop-up. Like pop yeah. Um, yeah, all the stones are up. Sorry, you know... Uh, when when they when Michael and Steve put all these stones, it takes a while to get them all loaded up. But all the stones are there now, so um, you can either I guess scan that little scan the shop if you're watching us on TV. That little QR code there, that'll take you right to the collection. Um, but if you go to moregems.com, you'll also right in the the, the green header, and there's a link to it or there's a huge banner on the homepage. You can't miss it. That'll take you right there. And um, then you can use the coupon code JEWEL, right, for 15% off. I think you already said that, Michael, but I'm repeating you. Yep, you got it. Um, are we are we done with Tucson? Am I going into everything? Uh, then, well, you, you can finish that. We'll get back, get to, back Tucson into Tucson a little bit. Okay, for the people yeah. that are just watching or this is your first time, <laughs> we have a ton of people that come back for our shows each month. Um, we do them once a month. Um, but if you're interested in buying anything, like I said, you can go to moregems.com. We're going to be talking about a lot of the stones on the show. Um, just use that jewel at checkout, 15% off the price that's listed. And you got a lot of options you can use. You can use credit card. You can do uh, PayPal we also have. And then we also have financing. So I think you can finance up to maybe six months with no fee. But I think you can go up to 12 total. I think there's a small fee for that. But um giving you lots of options to purchase so um what am i missing here layaway layaway so we do layaway but it's got to be tomorrow correct we that is right yeah, yeah. you'll have to call and, yeah, and so, set it up yeah we, so we don't hold it. for you but you can call tomorrow if it's available and you put it on layaway and you just have to put a percentage down and then you can pay over time yeah 20 percent down and up to six months up yeah. to six months so. there you go um, during the whole show, if you um, log into your accounts on YouTube, there's a lively chat there. Um, you can go there, you can post questions, and I'll be interrupting Steve and Michael throughout the entire show with your questions, and he can get them answered for you. So definitely post questions there. You can also go on our websites and you can chat with me there. I've got like three chats waiting right now. You can ask questions there. If you have any issues with the website, you can let us know. So um, I'm going to get to these chats, and you guys can go back to Tucson. <laughs> okay. All right. Back what to Tucson, the, Steve. Back to Tucson. Um, so, uh, yeah, where was I? You know, as far as Tucson and, and what it was like, you know, I, I found that prices were many on many things up fairly significantly. You know, it's it's even forced me to cut my margins back a little bit because the change has been so quick. I'm having a hard time adjusting to it. And, um, you know, it, it kind of across the board, things are up a little bit, but but some things up significantly. You know, the, the spinels are up significantly. And we've talked about the garnets ready. They've been pushed up. I don't think they've gone up anymore, but uh, they haven't become any more available either. Although I, I did get lucky to find some really nice garnets. 
Um, but uh, talking about the shows, you know, there are 45 different shows and uh, two major shows that are, are primarily, well, they're all, they are the strictest wholesale shows, which is AGTA, the American Gem Trade Association, which we're members of, and, and the GIA, or, um, GJX, uh, which is uh, the other largest show. They're right across the street from each other. The Gem and Jewelry Exchange. Gem and Jewelry Exchange. You know, and those are really good shows showing probably the finest goods available uh, and the most cut stones and, and rough. Um, whereas the other shows are, are more mix and more minerals and, and specimens and beads and, and, uh, a lot of cool stuff. There's a yeah, lot of stuff yes. to look at. And There's if you don't have a plan, there. yeah, you kind of, you can get lost, but, uh, we, me and Steve, when we're out there, it's, it's just always on the go. You know, we get up in the morning and we don't get back till the evening, you know, yeah. Um, I'm and exhausted after 12 days of it. Right, right. And, and not only that, you're kind of doing some networking here and there and um, going out to dinners with some people. And it, it's a great time. And, um, you know, just all a bunch of like minded people that love gems and minerals are all out there. And uh, it's just a big party that takes over Tucson. Okay. Anything else on Tucson? No, we got some great things to yeah. show you. Um, you know, if you came, what was it, a couple of weeks ago, um, you saw a few of the things. There's a lot of new stuff. Steve's been cutting some of the rough. So uh, there's a lot in this sh- in store for you in the show, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Also, if uh, you hear any issues with our mics or we're not loud enough, I'll try and adjust it. I can only do so much. But, um, yeah, let me know in the chat. And, yeah. That's about it. Let's get started, huh? All right. Well, up first is the most expensive stone in the show. Whoop. Oh. I'm kind of... Oh, the camera's off. <laughs> and we, yeah, we have technical difficulties consistently, but we get through them. So, so this is uh, one of the biggest and finest tanzanites that I've ever owned. I mean, it's just clean, well-cut stone, just beautiful color. Uh, and and one thing to keep in mind, our camera setup during this show is not the best. You know, the videos and pictures that are online are more accurate than what you're going to see in this camera that's set up because I can make no adjustments while we're doing it. And each of these stones has a better adjustment that'll show the stone more accurately to what it is. Uh, what you'll find online is the most accurate we can produce. And, and I think generally we have hit the quality of the stones extremely well. But what you'll see tonight is just a representation of the stone that is not perfectly accurate. Um, but like this looks nice, but it's actually better than what it's showing. Yeah, if you can imagine that. But anyway, this is a huge stone. It's 77 carats. Um, just totally clean. And uh, the blue in this stone is just amazing, you know. Uh, this particular stone, um, the appraised price on it is $96,150. Um, like I said, it's one of the biggest we've ever owned. Our online price is 55000 That's even hard to say that number. $846. Um And the 15% off price is $47,469. But this is an unusual stone that if you do, um, would consider doing a wire transfer, uh, we'll do it at $45,000. So that's something, I don't know how we communicate that. But if anybody's interested, just chat with us that uh, wire transfer might be interesting. Because at $45,000, it's $584 a carat. And literally, this is one of the finest tanzanites on the planet. I mean, the cut is beautiful, the clarity is great, and, and the color is just remarkable. You know, this stone literally has everything you want in a tanzanite. Steve, show me what it'll look like on your neck, huh? (laughs) On my neck. 
Okay, I'll try. Whoop. So it's a big, big rock. But not too big for a pendant. That actually looks, yeah. you know, not yeah, bad. Yeah, a good pendant. Might be a little big as a ring, but not for everybody. Well, anyway. So a special stone. I'm really proud to own it. And I'm really going to try and have some of these big ones in stock more often uh, because they have been saleable. Everything big I've ever cut or owned has sold relatively quickly. <clears throat> and this is the kind of stone that the investors are really looking at is just for its sheer size. You know, it used to be that these big stones um, were easier to get. Um, there was a time when I could get all the 100 carat stones I wanted, but that time doesn't exist now. It's just gotten very difficult to get stones over 50 carat, and really 30 carat is kind of the limit of what's easy to find, and beyond that it is quite difficult. So I think this is probably the biggest one we've had for... Uh, you know, I, I yeah. did see that you had cut an 80 carat but that was a while ago. Okay. It was, uh, I don't know if it been showed as big, but... Several years. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while so. since you've had a, a stone this size, for sure. And I love owning big stones. You know, it's just, just difficult to get great ones, and great ones at a, at a really good price. That's that's a real key, because selling these high-ticket items, they just have to be priced right. And this one is, for sure. So, special stone. This is... Uh, a piece of rough I've got that uh, one of these days I'm going to get around to cutting. I've showed it before. I don't know what this was. This was a couple hundred carats, I think, at least. Yeah, 255 carats. You know, if I didn't have to cut it totally clean, I could probably cut a 150 carat stone out of it. But it's got some issues in it, and I think uh, I'm looking at uh, maybe 70, 80 carats in two cut stones total. So, a really great color, great piece of rough. Guy just shut it off. No, it's gone. I think we shut it off last time. <clears throat> it's not back yet. Is it? Little camera issue. You want to try the battery? Or? Okay. Michael fixing something. Um, I could ask you, Steve, um, just a quick thing, because we may be talking about these stones. Um, G2 noticed um, that we do have a pear-shaped cabochon opal gemstone on the show. Um, we have two of them with the same picture. Two of them with the same picture. Yeah, one okay. is a 9.52 and one is a 15.74. Um, Pear-shaped cabochon opal. I'm not sure if you know which one is which. Nine. What was the weight? There's one that's 9.52 and 15.74. There's the 15.74. I mean, I, I can show them in 9.52. Okay. Yeah, they're similar, but not the same. I don't okay. know which one. Uh, which one's pictured? I'm not sure. <laughs> Did you That's, get the camera working yet? Yeah, uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Well, we um, can. So G two. So we'll 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 talk about them so we know which one is which. In actuality, um, you okay? You got one. We want to answer some questions. We got some questions. Sure. Yeah. Um, the Tans night that you just had, um, there was a question about um, what are your thoughts on like the Tans night from cruises and everything? Oh, yeah, on cruises? Yeah. 
Well, I've never been on a cruise, so can't give you specifics about it. But um, it, uh, yeah, it, I don't know. What do you think about it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know what to say, but I, I don't know how they're priced. I, I haven't seen anything spectacular coming off of cruises. I'm sure they have some nice downs. Um, I, I don't know who's currently doing it. They invited us to do, actually do the cruise lines. I'm not, I think it was I remember that, Norwegian yeah. Yeah. that asked us and they wanted us to come on and, and do, do the, do it. But, you know, that's the last thing I want to do is go on a cruise boat and work all day. And, <laughs> but, you know, so we, we declined, but, um, yeah, so I, I, I'm sure they change constantly who is doing the cruises and depend what cruise you're on. So it's just like anything, you know, it's, it's, uh, you need to know what this material is worth. I mean, you go on a cruise, you can go on our website and see what we sell it for and see if they're competitive and see if the color is all competitive. And that's how you would deal with the cruises. I'm sure we compete very well with the cruise lines because the cruise lines want a pretty good percentage to, uh, for, for themselves. So, you know, but I've never done it. So I, I really don't know what, what their prices are. You know, I'm sure the qualities are mixed just like anywhere. You know, it just depends who you're actually dealing with on the cruise. Okay. How's the camera coming, Mike? No, oh, it's not doing too well, so we're going to have to continue without it. For- you you want to try the battery? I did. Oh, okay. I'm not sure what's going on. But, yeah, go ahead and talk about the next dome. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm not totally thrilled with the quality of the pictures that come out of there anyway, so we'll we'll move move on because like I say, you know, I worked very very hard to get the photos online accurate, but it takes some work with the camera. I mean, each color has a setting that works best for it and recreates it most accurately. And uh, with this camera, we can't sit there and readjust each setting and um, you know, so, so you're going to trust what's online much more. Well, you got it. I got it. All right. Yeah. And that's About a good DM. Now I got to <laughs> show them again. <laughs> okay. But that is but a good anyway. point, Steve, because, you know, when we look at like competitor sites, how many of those are like just computer generated images? You yes. Know, oh like- yeah. One in particular, one of the biggest ones out there, I look at it and I, I go, I got every picture is the exact same color. Yeah. You know, every stone that's on there. And if you look at our site, there's such a wide range of color for tanzanite. And and it's true when I pick tanzanite stones for try and match them, it's a difficult process because every one of them is different. One's more blue, one's more violet. And uh, you look at one particular site and every color, almost identical color all the way through, you know, so how accurate can they be becomes a question. Yeah. So, all right. Next stone is a uh, road light or umbelite. Uh, well, more road light, I guess, this one. Uh, this stone I, I cut last week and really came out nice. You know, um, see if I can get this in focus. And this is fairly accurate, but the brilliance of this stone is is pretty remarkable. It's, it's a, pretty much a, a new style of cutting I've been doing. You know, I'm kind of the reverse of what all foreign cutters do. Um, Most do a Portuguese top, which if you look at this faceting, this is Portuguese style. And I've done that as a crown, whereas overseas they cut a Portuguese pavilion and do a brilliant style top. And this is a brilliant style pavilion, although I, I do 16 mains, which most rounds are eight mains. So I've just kind of reversed what foreign cutters do, and I'm really happy with how it came out. Uh, you can see this important person, this scintillation that this stone has. is just remarkable. So this is a rhodolite that weighs 18.67 carats. Uh, the appraised price is $8,405. 
Our online price, $51.75 with 15 off, it's $43.95. So it's $235 a carat. And this is really a big road light garnet and, and really a great color. You know, it's like I say, it's, it's some would call it umbelite. The piece of rough was sold to me as umbelite. And umbelite is just a, a lighter, more violet color. So here's a, if I can get this focused right. So, so this is a wax model, and, and it is something we can produce mountings for you. Any of these stones, we can produce a mounting. And this is a particular style that Chris did that is basically a diamonds around setting. So all those little dots you see around here, those are the four prongs that would set a diamond that will make this a, a really a, um, a halo style. You know, it's a little heavier halo style. It's a solid back. You know, this really this sets up really nicely and it, it's quite an attractive look. You know, no under gallery work, just just solid. So that stone, you know, we can cast this and, you know, this, this particular setting would actually work for this stone. So that's Road Light Garnet. This comes from Tanzania. And just really a, a beautiful stone. You know, there's a couple of inclusions in it, but you don't see them in person. You know, that's the other thing about these cameras. There's no hiding any of the inclusions. So when you see something on the camera, uh, most of these stones, you know, it's it's they're going to be, unless you put a really strong light to the side of it, you're just not going to see these inclusions in person. Particularly this stone, there's just, they're just such small inclusions. If I can find them. Anyway, that's Road Light Garnet. And a big one. <laughs> uh, next stone is an aquamarine. Uh, this aqua comes from Madagascar. Madagascar produces some of the finest aquas in the world. They're just nice, pure blue. They have no gray secondary tones that you might see from uh, aquas from Mozambique. Um, they're, they're nice and pure blue. Of course, they've been heated. You know, this would have had some green in it originally, uh, actually some yellow coloration. And when you heat it up, the yellow disappears, just like in tanzanite. Yellow is what we heat out of tanzanite, and yellow can be heated out of most stones. And that's what happens with most aquamarines. We heat them up, and, and the yellow disappears. On rare occasion, that yellow makes a really lovely-looking seafoam kind of addition to the blue, and that can be desirable. We don't generally heat those, but but most of the time, the yellow color is distractive in, a, in an aquamarine. But this is a nice deep color. This is deeper than most aquamarines. Not quite Santa Maria color, which is the, the deepest of the aquas, but really fine blue. So this pear shape uh, weighs 3.78 carats. Uh, 3402 is the appraised value. 1980 is our online price. And with the 15% off, it is $1,683. So $445 a carat. You know, aqua is a good wearable stone for rings. It's hard. Um, it's just very, very durable. It is a barrel, just like uh, emerald and uh, heliodor. Or red emerald. Red emerald, which is... Uh, Red Emerald is barrel that comes from the Wawa Mountains in, in Utah. And we talked to one of the suppliers of this material. And he calls it Red Emerald, although some people dispute that. They want to call it Bixbite or um, what's the other name? Red Barrel. 
A red barrel, yes. But red emerald is, uh, there's good reason that they have for calling it red emerald. Just the way it's formed is is formed just like emerald in a hydrothermal process. Um, so they feel red emerald is appropriate. Uh, and I, I have no argument with that. But anyway, this is blue barrel or aquamarine. And just a really lovely stone, nicely cut, and just make a nice pendant or a ring. Talk about uh, you may have noted I was chatting with people, but um, did you talk about how what we can do with these stones if they purchase them and custom designing? Well, I did mention it with that wax. Okay, you know, so we yes, we can produce a, a model for you. We do things in CAD, and Chris can design a piece and and send you the file and, and show you just what it's going to look like before we do it, uh, give you a quote, and and uh, then produce the piece. This is a piece of aquamarine rough. Uh, this is also from Madagascar. That's kind of what, what you deal with when you get the rough. Aqua is generally not full crystal, although occasionally it is. You know, this is more typical of what, what I would have as a piece of rough to start cutting. Next stone is a tanzanite, and it is one of our hidden gems. The first hidden gem. So this is a round, and it is, uh, this is a Portuguese pavilion and the brilliant crown, like I talked about. And, and it does produce very nice brilliance. You know, just extremely brilliant stone. Uh, weighs 7.78 carats. Uh, praise value on the stone is $6,620. Our online price is $3,890. And with the 25 off, it is 2917, which is 375 a carat, which for tanzanite is very, very inexpensive. You know, it is a com completely clean stone, nicely cut, and just beautiful brilliance. Now, Jeffrey, did you get that one listed? Yeah. So I was just going to say, you know, if you're like, where, where is this stone? Um, if you uh, go back to moregems.com and you're looking at the whole collection of all our stones, just refresh the page and this hidden gem will show up. So it is no longer hidden. Just have to refresh the page. And, and the reason it's hidden? It's hidden. Oh, the reason? The reason? Because we get a lot of people that like to pre-purchase. <laughs> so these, you know, for yeah. your viewers that you know are staying around the whole show, we got five of these that are all twenty-five percent off with rare twenty-five. Use that at checkout, and uh, these are kind of little little hidden nuggets and rewards for people that stay throughout the show. Okay. It's a really beautiful stone, you know, and and. It, you know, with with most tanzanites being in the 600, 650 a carat, uh, this is really well priced down. So, would you say this is a better size for pendant ring? Oh, it's it's good for either. You know, we've done so many rings this size, you know, and men's rings and women's rings. You know, it's not too big for a ring. It's only a, just a little over 11 millimeters. So big ring, but not not too big. You know, it, it, the cut is somewhat deep, so it is going to produce a, a ring that's going to sit a little higher. So. And our next stone is a sapphire. So this one comes to us from Madagascar. Uh, yellow sapphire that weighs 1.44 carats. Uh, the appraised price on this one is $1,520, our online price. 
of a thousand eighty, and with the fifteen off, it's it's nine hundred eighteen dollars. So six hundred thirty seven dollars a carat. And we bought quite a few sapphires. So if you don't see a color you like, I may have a color that you like. I mean, I have quite a, yeah, we have, I bought about 20 stones in this parcel in all different colors. Madagascar produces purples and pinks and uh, light blues. Uh, I'm not sure what other colors, kind of peachy color. Yeah, and and... Well, we have a pod project coming up later, but that's another story. So um, would you consider yellow a fancy color or what would be fancy colors in sapphire? Yeah, it's fancy color. Sure. Anything other than blue is fancy. Yeah. I think we've had this talk about tanzanite and people saying, oh, you should call it uh, pink zoisite or... You know, but uh, just like sapphire, these are fancy sapphires, and the tanzanites are fancy tanzanites. You know, just a nomenclature that some people agree with, some don't. You know, so this some would say this should be yellow corundum. You know, but that's not how it's been in the sapphire business and pink sapphire, yellow sapphire. You know. It is it is a sapphire. We just have to accept that sapphire comes in a wide variety of colors, and this yellow is one of them. Don't forget about red sapphire. Red sapphire. What is that? <laughs> Ruby, of course. Yeah. So, should they all have different names? <laughs> I don't oh, know. No. That'd be confusing. So, question. Yeah. Um, at first, I, I thought it was. Periba sapphire, but James wants to know um, with Periba tourmaline, said he saw some from Madagascar on a video from the Thai gem show. He said it was so ugly, looked like so so great aqua cut with a big window. But he wants to know what your thoughts are on Periba tourmaline, not from Brazil. Well, Brazil is the most important source, and it's generally better in its highest quality. It has a better characteristic. The, the glow that you get from the material is better from from Brazilian stones. And, and I say that in its finest quality, but in the stones of lesser quality, uh, Nigeria and Mozambique uh, produce similar stones. You know, the advantage or disadvantage of Paraiba from Paraiba uh, which we had one. Was it in the last show? Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think it was. Yeah, we did have a true Periba tourmaline, um, and and true Periba comes from this from Brazil, um, whereas the other sources of Mozambique and and uh, and Nigeria, uh, their value is significantly less. You know, like a, a half to a third of what material from Brazil is, and sometimes rightfully so, and sometimes, you know, they're just uh, getting their value because they are from the source, you know, and that's been common in this business, uh, just like Burmese rubies, uh, greater value than, than rubies of other sources, even if they're not more beautiful, just carrying the name of Burma uh, made them more valuable. So, and it's true of Periba, but, you know, occasionally in, in all sources, you know, there is a reason that that name carries a higher value is because the best of the material is better than other sources. You know, and that's true of Periba, um, that the best of the material is better than the other sources. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, where are we at here? Uh, we must be on this stone. So here's an interesting stone. This is a color change sapphire. Um, you know, this, when you go to daylight, it'll be blue like this. 
And when you go to incandescent light, unfortunately, I don't have that light available, it will go to purple. You know, so this is a color change sapphire. And this one actually is uh, graded by GIA as blue changing to violet. So they agree with that. This is the cert on the stone. So color change sapphire has a, a significantly greater value because it does color change. And just like uh, Alexandrites, um, which have become really, really expensive. I mean, to the point that I'm not sure who can afford them because a one carat Alexandrite these days can be fifteen to twenty thousand um, dollars, and and that has affected all color change stones. You know, color change stones have become very, very important, uh, and there are quite a few different stones that color change. Uh, there's sapphire. There's color changing garnets, which have gone up dramatically. The Alexandrite's gone up dramatically. There's some new stones uh, coming out of Sri Lanka. There's their um, zircons that do a color change from a bluish to green. Um, and and uh, trying to think what else color changes. You know, they're they're pushing some garnets uh, that have a slight color change. It's really a color shift, and there is a difference between color shift and color change. Color shift is just the shade change. You know, the color shifting garnets go from a peachy pink to a slightly more pink. You know, is kind of the change. So it's not a, a two different colors. It, it's just a, a sh slight shift uh, to a, a very similar color. You know, whereas this is a color change stone um, and its value is affected because of it. Um, this color change sapphire, a uh, praise price of $4,800, uh, $33, 35 is our online price. And with 15 off, it's $2,835. This is a beautifully cut stone. Um, very, very clean, you know, really has everything going with it. And, and the color change uh, should be represented well on our website All right, and our next stone is another rarity. You know, we've had very difficult time finding any fancy sapphire or fancy tanzanites. Um, this is a kind of a slightly greenish yellow color, but big size for these fancies. You know, it's just been very, very difficult finding anything fancy, and they're very saleable. You know, last material we've had was the greens, uh, which I think we probably had on the last show. Um, yeah, two, shows two shows ago. Yeah, they went quick. Yeah, they went quick. I had maybe six or seven stones, and they just went very, very quick. And I think I had one returned, and it just sold this week. So, so these fancies are just tough to get and easy to sell. You know, I'm always looking for the fancy uh, colors uh, just because of their saleability. And this is a 3.02 carat. Uh, it appraises at three thousand two dollars. Uh, there's really no. Our pricing guides don't have a, a real price for these stones because they're just so rare that, you know, they, they don't, uh, nobody's giving a, a pricing guide for stones of this rarity. You know, this is a one, one of a kind, you know, find another one like it and, you know, just very, very difficult. So it's a 302. Um, and and with the fifteen percent off, this is seventeen hundred and thirty-four dollars. So five hundred and seventy-four dollars a carat, which is in line with what the blues are. You know, the yellows are probably I don't know, they're the lower end. Yeah, they're probably the lower end of what the fancies go for. Uh some of the pinks are at the high end. Um, the greens were somewhere in the middle, you know, and you'll see you know, what other colors we've had? Uh, so peach colors, you know, those are a little more expensive than the yellows. 
you know, but this is just such a nice size. It's so difficult to find stones in the three carat size is probably the most saleable size of all the tanzanites. You know, they don't hit too high a price or affordable and, and they are at the, in the fancies, this is just a rare size. We got a huge subscriber list for tanzanite. So once I send out an email, if this, you know, it doesn't go tonight, <laughs> the colors yeah, just yeah. go all the time. So yeah, yeah the fancies are, if you do I, like I the wish yellow, I could pick. get more, you know, the last time I got a lot of them was in Tanzania in 2014. And, uh, you know, it was just the odd time then, you know, I got a lot of them and, and thought I was doing great and thought I'd hit the mother load, but they just hit a pocket of it. So everybody kind of had it, you know, but now that's not the case. There's just nothing around. So nice stone, you know, the, again, the inclusions you see in it are invisible. And when you hold it in your hand. You know, there's a couple of needles, which those are real typical in tanzanites. It's probably the most, one of the most common inclusions you see. And our next stone is a blue zircon. And this is really a remarkable blue zircon. Not only and is it one of our hidden it's gems. It's another hidden gem. Yes. yes. And it'll be 25 off. And Jeffrey's working on that for you now, so... One minute, and I'll give you 30 seconds and refresh the collection page, and the hidden gem will be there. So the color on this stone is impossible to photograph because this is so deep. This is just the extremely deep color uh, and, and a little more hint of green to them, which is what makes zircon what it is. You know, but taking a photo of it is so, so difficult. But this is one of the most beautiful blue zircons I've ever seen. You know, the color is just so, so deep. You know, it's, and it's different than what you see here. You just can't photograph the beautiful beauty of these blue zircons. It's just beyond my ability and beyond my camera's ability. Um, but you'll find that this is just a remarkable blue zircon. Uh, the appraised price on this stone is twenty six hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, online, uh, we're at eleven hundred and eighty, and with the twenty five off, it's eight hundred and eighty five dollars. Uh, so it's two hundred and ten dollars a carat. You know, just a good hard stone. The brilliance of uh, zircon is second only to diamond. Um, that's not an exact truth, but uh, it is remarkably brilliant. has a very high refractive index, which is what determines brilliance. And this is above the scale of our instruments for that we use to identify stones. You cannot identify a blue zircon, uh, which is primarily with refractive index. Uh, this is 181, and that's the limit of a refractometer. Uh, anything above that, it can't read it. So. so you get great brilliance, great color in this stone, and just a unique color. There's not another blue stone that has the look of blue zircon. You know, that addition of the green um, is really what makes this unique. And when you photograph these, you know, the kind of the green separates out of the blue, but in real life, it it blends and just creates a different color that you don't see in any other gem. This is really a remarkable stone. Put it on my hand. Oh. Or just hold tweezers up. That's a good size. Make a, make a wonderful ring. I don't know. Do I have a ring at all? I don't know. I have anything here that set it on. But, you know, it just... Just somebody should own the stone because it is just a beautiful, beautiful blue zircon. Not that all these stones aren't beautiful, but I'm really fond of blue zircons. Very saleable material, and and we do our best to get as much as possible. Question on zircon. Uh, Max wants to know: Is it big enough for a pendant? Absolutely. You know, and and you know, this is bigger than some people want. <laughs> In, in the case of uh, Mike's fiance and Jeff's wife, they both have smaller blue zircons in this set plane, 
just very simple, and it's one of their favorite pieces. You know, so it it is something that, uh, yeah, this is uh, three carats though, and I bet Carrie's is only one carat. Maybe you know, one and a half carat. You have an amazing memory, Steve. I well, gave that to her like ten years ago. That is, that is, <laughs> but it, I, I, I knew it was one, one of her favorites. Yep. She's made comment about it yep. because they they set them up just very simple, nothing else with it, and it's just a piece that you can wear every day. Yeah. And we don't make enough pieces like that. I think we made some for Christmas and sold them. Yeah, yeah, yeah just awesome. very saleable. And it's something we'll focus on more because I'm always looking at putting diamonds and everything with it. But, you know, there's there's that part of the public that just wants something simple. You know, I, I look at it and I go, oh, we need to add something to that. But, you know, it's not always true. There are people that just want to show off the stone and just – the, you know, and, and a stone like this doesn't really need anything to make it better because it's remarkable in in itself. And then you can, you know, it doesn't have to be some fancy event you're wearing it to. It's a everyday piece. You know, you can just sure. kind of pop it on whenever. Not that you can't wear something simple. No. To something yeah, that's true. Too. So here's a piece of rough. Uh, this is blue zircon rough. This actually comes from uh, Malawi whereas the last stone was from Cambodia. You know, this is a new source uh, coming out of Malawi just in the last couple of years. And, and it's unique because it is not so deep as the Cambodian material. You know, the Cambodian rough is pretty deep, so they tend to cut them deep because it highlights the color. But this material out of Malawi is already has very deep color. It's not very deep rough, so you can cut a, a normal cut and still have a, a good deep color. Looks like we've got a sale there, Stephen. All right. What's yeah. sold? That beautiful zircon. Blue zircon. Awesome. Right. You're going to cool. love it. I mean, yeah. it is an amazing stone. I, I Maybe one day, I, I've always had dif- difficulty with blue-green stones, uh, whether they're more green or more blue. It's just my camera is just not capable of of reproducing the color it wants to separate it out i don't i don't know what that issue is but um hopefully one day i'll figure it out and if anybody has any suggestions photographers out there you know it's just a unique issue that that these blue greens and green blue stones um just they act weird in the camera <laughs> yeah yeah let's hold to we want to thank tim he's actually from crown point so oh, hey, thanks, oh, cool. Tim. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Local. Cool. Yeah. And then we had another order. Um, Lance ended up um, actually just purchasing a, purchasing a piece of jewelry instead from us, but oh, that okay. works. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we also yeah, do cool. have a lot of jewelry on the site. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So, um, you know, hopefully you'll get a chance to look at the other stones, but thank you, Lance, as well. Okay. Thanks, Lance. Thanks, Lance. All right. Next is where are we at? Is it the Padparasha? It is. So here's, <laughs> when it comes to sapphires, this is the rarest color. Some dispute about that. Some people don't think it's the rarest color, but most agree that it's the rarest color. I've seen things written about it, but uh, Padparasha is considered to be the rarest of the sapphires. And Padparasha is pink orange to orange pink is, is how it's categorized. Uh, this stone I bought and I sent off to GIA right away um, because if it didn't get a Padparasha rating, I'd paid too much for it. You know, but fortunately, GIA agrees it is pot prasha. I have the cert to verify that. And they do say uh, pot prasha sapphire over here, which was a good thing because pot prashas are not inexpensive. And, uh, It'd have been a real loser if they just said it was a pink sapphire or something. But fortunately, that didn't happen. So I have a pot parasha, and I've had a couple of these in the last five years. I had one five carat, actually. Um, where, oh, the camera's off again, I think. So, but anyway, 
uh, this camera is going to show this is more pink anyway, the way it, uh, yeah. Uh, it still shows a little bit of the peach, but yeah, it shows it mostly as a pink stone. But the picture that you see online is the accurate, because if this stone went to GIA, it would come back as a pink sapphire, as it is pictured with this camera. But and fortunately, when fortunately, you were when we were looking through them, you kind of were like, "Oh yeah, that is paparazzo." When you were looking at it, yeah, were, I didn't have much question. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen enough pods to to know that it had enough peach color. And and my favorite stone is Malaya garnet, which is really, if it were a sapphire, they'd call the ones I like. They'd call those paparazzo because this is the color of the garnets that I love so much. So. Um, it it is a color I'm really familiar with, and and judging, I call it peach color. Um, judging that color is is becomes second nature for me, just because my favorite gem is garnet of this color. So, so I was pretty sure I'd get pot Praja and and it came out as hoped for. So anyway, um, relatively expensive sapphire, but uh, the value is there because this is truly a rare gem. Uh, find another one. Good luck. Uh, this Padparasha, uh praise value weighs 1.55 carat. Uh, 85.25 is the appraised value. 58.80 is our online price. 49.98 is the price with 15 off. Uh, so it figures to 3200 a carat, you know, which may sound like a lot, but it's just where Pod Parasha is. Um, you know, that five carat I had, although it didn't sell for that much, it would probably was a $40,000, $50,000 stone. So that's Pod Parasha Sapphire. Pod Parasha is a lotus flower um, in Sri Lanka. Um, is, is where the name came from. And, and most of the Padprashas uh, do come out of Sri Lanka. You know, this one's actually out of Madagascar. Uh, but Madagascar produces almost every color of sapphire. You know, they're very prolific uh, sapphire producers. You know, while I was going there, um, uh, we dealt in Ilakaka, which, which really produced a wide variety of colors. I never saw a pod parasha there, but uh, that's likely the source of this, but I'm not 100% sure. All I know is it is from Madagascar. Uh, next stone is, oh wow, another rarity. This one I just cut. <laughs> Just to hop in, I want to say what's up to Amy Carr. She's been watching our streams for a while, but this is the first time she's got to hop on and join the chat and uh, see a live one. So what's going on, Amy? So th this is uh, another fancy tanzanite, and this one's a really fancy color. Uh, I'll show it to you on this, but yeah, well, it's kind of, it's not exactly... It's a little more intense. The, the online picture is better for this stone. It, it's pretty much a lavender pink color. So it is a color I've never seen in fancy tanzanites. And it, it cut real nice. You know, I'm real happy with the cut. I don't know what to call it, but... Uh, I think I called it a kite originally and then parallelogram, but I don't, it is a parallelogram, but not, you usually think of as a parallelogram as not having four sides equivalent, but these four sides are pretty much equivalent. It's almost like a angular marquee or, you know, but really a remarkable color. And, and like we talked about, you know, the pink in the fancy colors is the rarest of the fancies. You know, this is a little more lavender pink, but it is a remarkably brilliant stone. Just a beautiful color. Clean, you know, just very happy with how this came out. Rough, lighter than, t like, this color as well, compared to, like, regular tanzanite. Yeah. Oh, oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because there's no heating here. 
I mean, the the stone is unheated. It came out of the ground this color, and and the piece of rough pretty much looked like this. Yeah, that's a cool color. Yeah. So. Mm. Um, so another high rarity stone. Um, this stone weighs five carat even. Uh, 8,900 is a praise value on it. 6,900 is our online price. 58.65 with the 15% off. So about $1,173 per carat. You know, about double what uh, fine blue tanzanite is, but in a rarity, it's like a thousand times rarer than blue tanzanite. And blue tanzanite supposedly is a thousand times rarer than diamond. So it puts it in a, a pretty rare class, you know, and just being the size it is, five carat is a special size for fancy stones and the quality of the cutting on it, pat myself on the shoulder, um, is it, it just, it came out great. You know, I mean, the brilliance that this stone has is pretty remarkable. You know, it's a Barian style pavilion step cut crown and it just worked really really well mr barian mr barian <laughs> yeah i uh, won't live that down now yeah. <laughs> comment here <laughs> my dana yeah. or mom, mr barian mr barian i never heard that before that name's gonna stick with him forever all right Moving right along. Uh, next stone is uh, another one that I just just finished cutting, and and this one's really a rare stone too. Um, it is a natural unheated tanzanite, and this is the deepest color natural that I've ever seen. You know, I knew this color of this material was different than than most. Um, it just looked different, you know, uh, and it, uh, definitely cut different because if you look at most of the natural fancies I've had, they're just not this depth of color. This one's pretty much pure blue. Um, I don't know what the secondary is, but there's not much. It's almost all blue and just very, very deep color. So just just uh, interesting cut, high clarity, um, and again, totally natural color. Steve, can you put that on your finger? Somebody wants to see that what that looks like. Let's see, don't look at the camera, and so give you an idea size wise. So this, uh, this I cut uh, pretty much step cut crown and pavilion. So this, uh, oh, that's, is that the right stone? 890. Okay, praise price on this, 11570 Online price of 66.75 and 15 off it's 56.73 so $637 a carat uh, right in line with what natural price tanzanite is you know this material it was more expensive if you saw the color and I, and I've got I think 10 pieces in this parcel this is the first one I've cut and I don't know what to expect out of the rest of it. Um, there's just a dramatic difference in the uh, direction. You know, these have directional color and dramatic difference in when you rotate these stones. So it'll be interesting to see what the rest of the parcel cuts. Did you pull any of that rough out or no? No, you know, I didn't. Do you want me to see if I can grab some back there? You... I'm not even sure where I put it. Okay. Yeah, because I, I just looked through the rough. It's here somewhere, but um, it it totally different than anything I've ever seen. You know, it came from a friend of mine that uh, we've traveled together. Um, 
and uh, it it just was unique parcel. You know, at at first when I saw it, I said, "Nah, I'm not interested." You know, just a picture of it just didn't look that special, and the price of it was significantly more expensive than than what I'm used to for Tanzanite rough. But when I finally saw it in person, I go, "That's I've never seen anything like it." You know, and that's enough to make me interested. And so I bit the bullet and and bought the material and, you know, real happy I did uh, because I think I'm going to get a little better yield than I I thought I would because the pieces were kind of odd shaped and, you know, a lot of risks involved with odd shaped rough and, you know, particularly spending more on it and not knowing whether you'll get yield out of it. And so time will tell just, just how this material looks. And I'm kind of anxious to get one on the purple axis. This was straight on the blue axis and gave me an all blue stone. And the purple axis on some of these stones is pretty dramatic purple and uh, just be interesting to see what else comes out of it. So up next is a tanzanite crystal. This comes from Mineral Mike. And really a beautiful piece because it has high clarity. And within this stone, I estimate about a two and a half carat stone could be cut out of it. Uh, That's clean. It's one side of this. And actually, there may be facet material on both sides, but but uh, this Steve's this, always trying to cut my gems. Yeah, well, you know, it's <laughs> nice. It's nice that if you buy in a crystal, that right. it actually oh, yeah. has material in it that is facet grade. No, yeah, that's what I you know look for. I'd, I know I would much rather buy some facet grade material, but yeah. uh, it, it's difficult in yeah, the crystals. You know, yeah, you're not gonna not gonna find much of it because they're gonna cut it as quick as they. You know, you get a nice facet grade stone, unless it has perfect crystal shape, because crystals actually can have greater value than what the cut stone within them, which is the case with this. You know, this this one's probably equal as far as if, if there is a two and a half carat, like I would predict out of this stone, you know, it has a value almost equivalent to what the crystal value is. Um so a two and a half carat uh, at five hundred a carat is about twelve hundred and fifty bucks, and and that's about where this stone ends up, you know, with fifteen off. Uh, this particular crystal is twelve hundred and six bucks. So if you decided you didn't like it anymore as a crystal, you cut it up and and you get a stone of of equivalent value out of it, which. You don't get that in every crystal you buy. Most crystals you buy have no cutting material in it. But this has facet grade material. And like I say, there could be on the other side of the stone, there could be another stone in it also. With this piece, uh, I think the last show you guys displayed a a crystal with aqua, or a necklace with the aqua Uh crystal in it. Could they do, um, she calls it a gold paperclip chain, one like the aqua crystals. So could this be put into a pendant? Sure. Yeah, this is a good shape. And yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah, this could be done. And then like you said, if she got tired of wearing it as a crystal, I guess (laughs) she could 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 make it into a ring. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can see the the one side of this. Yeah, it's just totally clean. You know, so that's... uh, the side that we're looking at now, I think, is the side that uh, I was seeing the stone in. But anyway, you know, it really is a crystal. That's just secondary. You know, it, it's a beautiful crystal. The terminations are just perfect on it, you know, and just a really, really nice crystal. And, and getting that high clarity, you know, just makes the crystal look better. You know, whether there's facet material in it or not, it just has a better look because of the clarity and would make a wonderful pendant. And, you know, this is just one of, I, I have a whole, over probably 120 tanzanite crystals on our tanzanite website. I just added 
I don't know, uh, another new 45, including this piece, uh, that's on TanzaniteJewelryDesigns.com. So there's uh, many, many crystals on there. Not all of them are suitable for jewelry just because I worry with some of the inclusions in them, make them a little bit more fragile. But this one, um, it doesn't look like there would be anything that I would worry about cleaving off too much or anything like that. So I think this would be pretty stable for jewelry. Say, you know, because we do have like, you know, um, gem cutters watching us too. I mean, could they purchase this if they were looking to? Well, I think it's a break even right now. Though. Yeah. You know, two and a half carat stones worth the value of what the crystal is. So not a, not a perfect piece of rough that you're going to make money on. You know, yes, you could cut it and you'd have the value of what you paid for it. You know, if you're a cutter and you just want to cut a nice tanzanite, it's got to cut a nice tanzanite. Um, you have to be sure you can get good yields out of it because that two and a half carat is what I predict I could get out of it. And, and I do get very good yields out of material. So, you know, there's risks that you only get a two carat and, or a carat and a half. You know, then then it doesn't have the value of what you're paying for it. So, all right, okay. Always to good. Just keep it as a crystal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm 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 the cutter, and that's how I look at things. Is what can I get out of it? But you know, this whole crystal business has nothing to do with cutting, and you know, most people in the crystal business don't even want to talk about cutting this piece. You know, and that that's sacrilege, even talking about what I am about this piece of, uh, this crystal. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, so next is a peridot. You know, and this is really a beautiful peridot, beautifully cut. And a hidden gem, the third and hidden, a hidden gem. gem. Jeffrey, are you on it? I'm trying here. All right, Got chatting with people. So again, the hidden gem, you're going to have to refresh to, to see it. The collection page where all the stones are, and this will show up. So this hidden gem, you know, again, this picture, it's not the yellow green. You see it's blue green, you know, um, but it, it's just a really well cut stone. Um, very good clarity. It has a couple of inclusions in it, but all peridot do. I, I mean, I can't remember the last peridot I cut that was flawless. But this is really clean stone. It's going to be an eye clean stone. And, and just remarkable color. You know, after we bought these stones, I got back to my room because the light, light I bought it in was not good. And uh, I got back to the room and I go, oh, I should have bought more because the color is just right. You know, just that, that slightly bluish green color that you hope for in Peridot and only comes from material out of Pakistan. Just really, really a great stone. And the uh, praise price on this is $4,310. It weighs 7.56 carats. Uh, our online price is $2,650. Uh, with the 25 off, it's $1,988, $263 a carat. Just a really nice size stone. Okay, where are you at? Where am I at? So, kind of give you an idea. Oh, really great stone for a ring or pendant. And that color, like I say, you only get that material from Pakistan, that kind of color. I say that, but Burma, Burma does produce some nice colors. But uh, currently, we can't buy anything from Burma. You know, it's, it's banned. That that picture there is an accurate representation of the color. You get that bluish green, not the yellow green that, that we showed. Just very, very nice peridot. Next up is a spinel. 
you know, got lucky and bought a few spinels. Is that the right one? Lost, lost my order here. Yeah, it's got to be. Looks like the right one, right? <laughs> okay. So this is pink spinel. This comes from Sri Lanka. And, and the pink spinel from Sri Lanka is a much better price than currently the material that comes out of Tanzania, a, a stone this size out of Tanzania, uh, about another $1,000 onto it. Uh, the Mahenge material has just gone nuts. Um, as, as all spinels have gone up significantly. So I was just glad to get a nice pink spinel that is not crazy price. Carrot 82, praise price 5100 bucks. Uh, our online price is 2490 and with the 15% off it's 2116. Just a really nice pink. I mean it is pink as pink I know it. You know a lot of a lot of pinks have uh, secondary brownish colors, a lot of secondary colors. These are just a nice beautiful pink color. It looks like we had a sale. Yep. I, I'm not sure. Um, I think we talked about a lot of the stones that you can find now. We're not going to talk about them all, but <laughs> I believe we're not talking about this one. But Matthew purchased the purple kite sapphire. Oh, yeah. Yes, so. that's in the stones that are not on the show, but they're, they're on, on this sale. group of stones. Yep. Yes. Cool. Yeah. So that was part of the parcel with that yellow and, you know, just one of the fancy colors I bought is... It was purple, huh? Purple yeah. kite. Yeah. Okay. And then let's continue with the sapphires. Um, I don't think these two are on talking about, but Tina purchased the round mix cut pink sapphire and the oh, yeah. purple round brilliant cut sapphire. So is the purple the one that's the one worth- one is a one point fifteen carat and the other one is one point oh nine. Okay, the 109 is on the show. Was to be on the show. All right, well. But I think that was it. We'll see. Yeah. Could be. I'll yeah. call you out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll mark it as sold once it comes okay. up. So thank you guys, Matthew and Tina. Tina. Yeah. Thank you. You know, the, those all came out of one parcel, and I'm just thrilled to buy it. Uh, our supplier from Sri Lanka, it just had. Is to pulled out this parcel and we went through it and I think we selected twelve, maybe ten or twelve stones out of it and all carrot plus stones. Yeah, they were all really nice. Just, it's just such a wide variety right. of colors. Most of it out of Madagascar, um, but uh, just just pretty exciting material. And that that pink that she got that was intense pink. I. I had to decide whether to put the purple one on the show or the pink one on the show, but we've probably showed I have too many pink stones on the show, so I went with the purple and yeah. But glad you liked them both. I got a question about uh, again. I'm not sure if this is going to be on it, but the if you're going to talk about it or not, it's a really cool looking um, the antique cushion amylite. Uh, yes. Um, he wanted to know, Max wanted to know if those were scratches on it or what, I don't know if you can talk about the... So when the the animal dies and lays on the bottom of the sea, gets covered up with material um, and gets covered up with 50 foot, 100 foot, I don't know how many feet of material, and just the weight eventually crushes the shell... And you actually get some cracking in it. I'm not sure. That's probably. I don't know. These these are quite clean, but but there's there's always some um, when it's compressed. Uh, it must be this. Let me see what. Oh, okay. So the three lines that you see, uh, one, 
over here. There's two over here and one across that, you know, that, that's, that's where the shell was actually compressed and actually cracked there, you know, and you'll find it in all amylite. I mean, occasionally you find a piece of amylite that doesn't have any cracks in it. Um, but, but it's rare. I mean, it's in almost all of them, you know, but these reheal, um, but are still present in the stone. I mean, it's just a natural feature of amylites. Guess that explains it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I have any that don't have any cracks. You know, occasionally they can cut, like you could have cut this one in a smaller stone between these cracks and it would be crack free. But, you know, they generally don't do that. You know, they cut the biggest piece they can get that uh, will show these kind of colors. And this is a beauty. You know, particularly, I'm really fond of the stones that have these blues in them. You know, is the color that really turns me on. But you get reds and greens, you get all the colors in this, including some violets. Blues, because I remember when we were, I don't know if this is the, when we have when we were in Montana last year, Yeah, I remember we were looking at some amylite and you were looking for the blues. It seems like they were more rare than... The other colors or? Yeah, well, the pure red ones are the rarest of them. Okay. I don't find those the most attractive. I mean, I really love these blue colors and the purples. And, and if you can get all the colors, great, you know, like this one has. Um, but I, I just, I, the blue is what excites me. Yeah. I probably bought a few too many that were blue and I should have mixed it up a little better. But, uh, you know, this this is a great one because it has all the colors in it for sure. Is a little out of focus. Somebody was asking the durability. Could someone use this? Um, no. Lolo was no <laughs> in a ring. No, it, oh. this is actually in a in a belt buckle. Well, you don't hit a belt buckle much. I mean, it's not like you run into things or you're crawling on the ground. So, I don't see any reason you couldn't do a belt buckle. You know, but they're they're not a real durable stone. They're not hard. Um, so they don't have a lot of hardness going for them. So things like rings and stuff are not good for, for amylites. Uh, but, but as long as you're not abrading the surface, they're, you know, they're wearable. So I think that's Stoney was talking about. Kristen purchasing it. So he's going through the process now. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's a beauty. Um, another sale. Um, so just like earlier, some, you know, some people buy the jewelry, some people, you know, they just shop the rest of the website. So, um, I want to thank Joseph. He actually purchased, um, a brilliant gray spinel ah. from us. Cool. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> uh, I don't know if Joseph knows my, uh, yeah. opinion of gray spinel. <laughs> I've never loved it. But I'm learning to love it because it's one of the most saleable stones that we buy. You know, I, it, I just finally figured I don't know everything. And here's one that I'm wrong on because everybody seems to love gray spinel. You know? Yeah, no, it's, it's true. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. not the traditional stone. I've, I've been my, through my whole time in business. It's not a traditional color that's been extremely popular, but in the last 10 years, it has become one of the most popular gems that's available. So live and learn. And, you know, it, it, uh, it has beauty that I'm starting to recognize. So, and you can ask Michael's fiance about Grace Spinel. She loves it. I don't know. She's got two now. Uh, I don't know. She's, she's she, well, she, you know, we've, we, we bought the one out there and I told her if it doesn't sell, uh, it would be hers, but it's sold. sold it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think there's a pair Sorry, of Karen. earrings that she wanted and they sold. Yeah. yeah. So she loves it. I just need to, uh, we'll maybe try just and shop get more for her. Grace Spinel. So, yeah. You know, I got one too. I can't 
yeah, five years yeah, ago. Yeah, you did too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a popular different. with my kids too. So one of these days you're going to see me wearing one. <laughs> telling you. You know, with all the houses now, with the gray wood floors and the, the yeah, gray yeah. walls, it's yeah, color. I got to I gotta come along with the changes. Or you, with the changes. Or you can just like what you like and let everybody like what they like and then yeah. get what, a little bit of everything. Yeah, and that's how it's going to be. Yeah. All right, moving along. Uh, we go out again. Yeah. Yeah, I'll start you off on this one. Oh, it's the Turkish diaspora. Commonly known as Zoltanite. I can't use that term in print because it's a. Uh, it's a, you know, I don't know what those lines in the picture are. They aren't there. I can't find them in the. Yeah. These things. Oh, it's a hidden gem. Yeah. Hidden gem. Yeah. All right. For all those people, again, if you're new, if you go to moregems.com and click on the collection um, of the sale, shop gem shown sale, refresh the page and this new. Turkish diaspora will appear. Thank you, Jeffrey, for making these hidden gems appear. It's, you, it is magic. In those lines you see, no matter what I do, I can't find them. It looks like, like a, brush. Something from a brush. Oh, it's on the surface. <laughs> no wonder I can't find it. Okay. Yeah, it's from my, my brush that's supposed to wipe off everything. I was going to say, I, I look at this with Time a bright a light, brush. and it just does not exist. Yeah, it's on the surface. Okay, that explains it. So anyway, Turkish diaspora is a uh, color-changing stone. You know, I forgot about Turkish diaspora in my talk about color-changing stones. <clears throat> this is one that's become really popular. I mean, the, the people at Zoltanite... Uh, promoted it well, and it became a very, very popular stone. Um, my friend Jim, who we traveled for 20 years together, um, he was the uh, global sales manager for Zoltanite, and they really did a remarkable job promoting this gem, became very, very popular, uh, high demand for it. You know, unfortunately, lately there's been a... Um, a lot of change in the business. Um, Zoltanite uh, became a, a trademark name. Um, then there was Zarite because there was a split up of the mines. Uh, the owner of the mine split from Zoltanite and I think went with the people of Zarite. And now it's marketed many ways. Uh, Turkish diaspora is, is a name I can use that's not uh, trademarked. Like like Zarite and and Zoltanite, so this is a Turkish diaspora. Um, its color change is from greenish in daylight. It, this has a pretty remarkable green color, remarkable for Zoltanite. And I wrote shit down there, but... Yeah, whether you know, it's not. I mean, it's two different colors. You know, it's brownish red and it's green. So we're gonna say it's. Uh, not a color shift, it's really a color changer because the colors are two different colors. You know, they kind of blend a little bit, um, but when you go to incandescent light, it's going to be a, you know, this, this is going to show kind of the two different colors. Yeah. So in daylight, you, you get the strongest greens you see in this picture, which is difficult. But that strong green you see there, when you go to daylight, it is what you start to see is, is a real strong green in it. And in incandescent, it's mostly the, the brownish red color. You know, neither one is in really intense color, but but it is a good color shift. Yeah. 
lot of um, hard hard to tell what the true availability of this material is. Uh, they're saying that the mines are closed and not producing, and then I find a stone. So it's 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 hard to say. But anyway, it's a uh, rare material, unique material. Um, boy, I should know. I think it's like tanzanite. Um, can you do a quick search on it? You know, I, I should ask, know. Uh, Chat GPT and see what it when it comes up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's like Tanzanite, six and a half, seven, I believe, or it could be a little better. I think maybe maybe six it's point five uh, to seven. Okay. So unique stone, unique cut, um, big stone, nine carat, and it really is a size you need to get the color change out of them. Um Smaller stones just do not, <laughs> those fibers just really <laughs> distracted me. I got, man, I just couldn't figure that out, where those came from. And, oh, well. So anyway, uh, Turkish Diaspora, uh, praise value of 8260 bucks. Uh, our online price of sixty two fifty, and with 25% off, it's... Uh, 46 something 4687 so 510 dollars a carat in my experience with zoltanite uh, when when i was when my friend jim was with zoltanite uh, the material this size wholesaled for five or six hundred a carat you know so hard to tell where it's at because there is no market for it now as far as there's no material um, i'm sure that uh, you can go on zoltanite.com and, you know, I think they're mounting material now. But this is a really nice stone, should be the right money. Yeah, I think generally this material is going for about a thousand bucks a carat. Zoltanite from Turkey. Turkish diaspora from Turkey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, we can say salt tonight. I don't think they can. I don't know if they can give me a hard time about that or not. Salt tonight, salt tonight, salt tonight. <laughs> this video is getting taken down. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. go on and edit yeah. that out. Well, this is like instead of salt tonight, Mr. Barry and Mr. Barry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, moving right along. <laughs> From Zoltanite, uh, Turkish diaspora, sorry. Yeah, and I don't want to, I mean, the the people at Zoltanite, it, it was a great company, and, and I worked with them for a long time uh, when it was Zoltanite, and it still is, I guess, or I don't know what to say about it. I'll just move along. Uh, next, next up is something unusual. A... Uh, meteorite skull. So this is a piece of meteorite cut into the shape of a skull. Uh, this is uh, a meteorite, the Gibeon meteorite from Namibia, right? Yeah. I probably, if I went to the Tucson show, I probably would have grabbed myself one of these little guys. If I would have known, I would have picked you one up. Nope, you didn't let me know that. I didn't know. You? Yeah, a little different. I suppose you can make a pendant out of it. Huh? Little skull pendant. Remember those things at the end of pencils, like the erasers? Stick it right in there. Have like a special <laughs> pen made or something. Oh yeah, but pe like pen people would like that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah you know, yeah. be a cool custom pen. So Somebody that's into pens and skulls and space is yeah. for them. All right. Uh, so the meteorite uh, weighs 8.7 grams. Um, 5.49 is our online price, and the 15 off is 467 dollars. You know what would be cool is if like 
made one of those crystal pendants and perched that on the top of it. Mm-hmm. That'd be pretty sweet. There's a thought. Yeah, and that so that yeah. tanzanite that would yeah. mount up. Yeah, put that, that right on top of that. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I like that idea. I never thought about that combination. Oh, well, we have three of them. We'll have to do one. A tanzanite with a meteorite skull on the top. Ooh, good idea. We'll be glad to do that for you. Whoever wants to purchase this meteorite skull. So this meteorite is literally the oldest thing in existence on this planet. There is nothing older than this meteorite skull. And the reason for that is that the earth reformed and everything on earth reformed. And this came later. You know, the earth and this were born at the same time. The material that made earth and the material that made this meteorite were formed at the same time. But earth reformed, so everything on earth is younger than this meteorite skull. So this is 4.3 billion years old, give or take a few million. You remember that? I don't know that that number is exactly correct. I mean, do you remember back then? <laughs> oh, that's and pretty wrong. You like that, Jeffrey? <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Longer allowed to talk. Take that little figurine of yeah, you yeah. Take, 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 <laughs> take his, him down. I gotta, I gotta take my little face away. Yep. Bye. Yeah, we gave you a microphone now and that's what you're gonna do okay up next is another sapphire we're pretty hot on sapphires this time because i bought a lot of sapphires you know we had a sapphire that was going to be in the show that was the most expensive sapphire i've ever bought but it didn't quite make it through the day it was purchased earlier today by somebody i i originally bought it with them in mind. Um, but it was a little more than they wanted to spend, but they, you know, they uh, decided that it was the right stone. That was a f- little over five carat sapphire. But this is a 171. Uh, try not to get distracted here. A uh, beautiful round stone, um, nice depth of color. It It just shows well. You know, when you set this, you'll have no... Difficulty knowing it's blue, whereas some of the finest sapphires are actually pretty dark blue. You know, what's considered to be the finest is, in some people's mind, a little over dark. You know, but this is a nice bright stone, well cut, um, just very clean stone, VS clarity. uh, So just some very minor inclusions in it. Um, But uh, the cutting on it just produces a lot of brilliance. Oops, sorry. Get that skull out of here. (laughs) So just a really attractive stone. Kind of looks like the color change stone, just doesn't have a color change, which makes it a lot more reasonable. Uh, Because this stone at a carat 71, uh, appraised price of $3,570. Our online price twenty five sixty five, and with the fifteen off, it's twenty one hundred and eighty bucks. So a nice big face because it's really wall cut, no extra depth to the stone. And I was debating whether I cut. I was thinking maybe this was a Montana stone I'd cut because the cutting was so good. I, yeah, that's arrogant. Sounds arrogant, but. But I I do cut well, and, you know, finding stones cut right is not the easiest thing in this business because a lot of these stones are are cut uh, in countries that that ideal cutting is not their goal. You know, yield is their goal. You know, but this stone is just remarkably well cut. Pretty stone. And uh, measures, uh, I don't know what this is, 7.1 millimeter. So a good size uh, for a ring. I don't know if I can. Can you give me a? Yeah. So make make a nice nice size ring. Uh, 
Amy said that uh, she thought that when the video turns to the side, there's a little bit of violet. Or is that just her phone uh, that she's watching? No, a little bit of violet. Yeah, yeah. Which is not unusual. You know, even you know, what are considered to be the finest sapphires, um, in some people's mind, would be cashmere and Burma. You know, the, some of the sapphires that come from Magak and Burma. Um, you know, and we're talking about that the finest of these sources. Um, both of them have a secondary violet color to them. And, and the uh, cashmere stones are just known for that secondary violet. And, and that's one of the characteristics that, that cashmere is expected to have, a secondary violet color. So not unusual in sapphire for that to happen. So uh, I do. This, this one... Uh, this one is, <laughs> I, I think I almost know, because I think the comment was Sri Lanka or Madagascar, you know, and, and the reason for that is because most of the Madagascar stones come via Sri Lanka, because as I was traveling to Madagascar, all the competition I had was Sri Lankans, you know, when I'd go to Alakaka to buy sapphire you know, the whole street was lined with offices that they built these wooden shacks and they were all but run by Sri Lankans. You know, they were pretty much in control of the market there. And so it is somewhat difficult to ID the difference between Madagascar and, and Sri Lanka. You know, a lot of times uh, the labs can do it, but not always. You know, so that's why this stone came to me. I, I asked for the information and they said, Sri Lanka or Madagascar, you know, and, and that's the issue, you know. So pick one. I'm going to say I would have said Sri Lanka on this one, actually, would have been my choice. Just the, the color is a little different than what I typically see from Madagascar. So. Uh, Steve, before we go on, it looks like uh, Steve's com or Jeff's commenting, but um, could we reshow that uh, 18 karat rotolite real quick? Yes. Thank you. Oh, you wasn't. Yeah. yeah. And, and this will not do it justice because the amount of brilliance, I mean, this kind of shows a muted brilliance. This just sparkles. It scintillates. It, uh, you know, the, the facets are just like diamond flashes. You know, it, it looks more like a diamond type of brilliance. Yeah, when I first Steve showed me this stone, I was just blown away by it. Honestly, he's like, you know, it's rhodolite and kind of just saying it's rhodolite, but I, I thought it was amazing. Just I looked at it, I was like, holy cow! Like that's definitely a stone that I would like to own. Just looking at it, and we were—I don't know what lights we were standing under, but um, it looked pretty sweet. And this now is my cut of choice for a round whenever I have the opportunity. You know, so often the stones cut overseas, like I said, they, they cut opposite of what this is. You know, and what ends up happening, they do the uh, pavilion like I did the crown of Portuguese style. And they do the pavilion right. They get the depth right. And in the Portuguese styles, they're deeper than this. But then they end up doing a brilliant style crown. But the crown is so flat, it has... I mean, it, it's it's half as thick as this, and it just affects the brilliance so much. Not having a full crown in a stone. Big rain, but not too big. All right, where are we? Tourmaline.
So this next stone's green tourmaline. You know, this is another one that's a tough one to photograph. Emerald cuts are the worst. You know, they just, they're so particular about how the light hits them. You know, you, you wear them or you, it, it's easy to get the brilliance out of them, but when they're rotating on a, a round plate, it, it's just so hard to photograph. I just hate photographing emerald cuts. You know, they are a little more specific as far as the the direction that the light works on them. But this tourmaline just has a beautiful color. Blue-green is the most desired of the green tourmalines. You know, you add that blue to it and, and the value of a tourmaline goes up significantly. So this one weighs 21.25 carats. Uh, praise price on this, 11790 Our online price, 6890 And with 15 off, it's 5856 So 275 bucks a carat. And is it true that it's fairly difficult to get this color anymore? It, yeah, yes. Yeah, it is true. Yeah, just the, well, you know, the, the greens have been less available. Um, Congo is producing a lot of green, but it's light green, light colors, and typically not this blue-green color. I have had a few from Congo in this color range. Yeah, we can take a little extra time because somebody bought the next stone. I know. You did. Yeah, which was the carrot nine purple sapphire. And it's really well, another really well cut stone. You know, just bright, cheery. Yeah, that is a really nice stone. Was that a notation for that stone? That was, was a notation that for that stone, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's sold, but, okay. but beautiful and, yeah, yeah, still worthy of being shown. <laughs> and the next one, another sapphire. Kind of unique, you know. Um, it's kind of bicolor. Um the bicolor in in this case is caused by the dichroism in the stone. Uh, one direction, a little more yellow-green. Actually, this one has on one side a patch of yellow. It's more zoning than anything, than, than dichroism. Uh, zoning in sapphires is really common. Uh, that's why we see bicolor sapphires. Um, and, and in this case, the bicolor is caused by the color zoning uh, being towards one end of the stone is, is more yellow and reflects across the stone. And the body color of the stone is more blue-green. So you get that uh, bicolor effect. Yep. Get it in focus. I think now you can, there you can see the, the end that's yellowish, that yellow color zone, and, and that's what's causing this bicolor effect. So unique sapphire, uh, weighs a carat 63, uh, comes from Madagascar. And this one, we're sure it's Madagascar and not Sri Lanka. Uh, it is a praise value of $2,640. $1,650 is our online price. Uh, $1,402 is 
is the uh, price with the 15% off. And the coupon code is JEWEL. So $860 a carat for this uh, carat 63 bicolor sapphire. Again, really nicely cut. Uh, VS clarity. And up next. On that, just a sure. question. Uh -huh. um, I guess it's a, I know we've done it before with the, you know, I think uh, in our initial video talking about this show, we had all that Rwanda amethyst that you, was it all Rwanda amethyst that you poured out? No, that was uh, Bahia, Brazil. Ah, okay. So we had a gentleman here wondering, um, I know we've sold some of the amethyst rough in the past. He was wondering if you if you know you still sell Rwandan amethyst rough or not. I Rwandan, I I have so little left that no, I don't sell it. Okay. You know, I have a few big pieces left, but Rwandan came and went so quick that uh, I really didn't get a chance to stock up much of it. You know, I have some smaller, some four or five gram Bahia material that I can sell, but a Rwandan, nothing. Yeah. Okay. And some of the Bahia cuts real similar to Rwandan. You know, the finest Rwandan was better, but um, the the quality of the Bahia is, is close. So, right. And the best Bahia cuts remarkably similar to, to Rwandan. <laughs> All right. Next stone is a Morganite. Really a lovely peach color. JP Morganite. It is my favorite color. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never bought me a car this color. One of my favorite rings. I bring it up all the time. Is that uh, Morganite you made me? And I think oh, Michael yeah, said yeah. all the diamonds. How many diamonds were there? Uh, probably quite a few. It's been a while. It's been a lot. There's like 50, 60 little really teeny good. diamonds around. Amazing ring, though. But I love, yeah, yeah Morganite. Yeah, that amazing. came out nice. So Morganite is a, a pink to peach barrel, uh, like emerald and aquamarine, same gem. Uh, this comes from Mozambique. Just really nicely cut, nice bright stone, and it's not and just lovely color. Is this color? Would you say this is uh, close to the color, or in in no, the picture online is closer. Yeah, this is a little bit too intense on this camera. You know, but you can trust the picture. That 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 is really the color. Yeah, yeah, that that color is accurate. You know, which for morganite to me, that's the right color for morganite. You know, that nice peach color. You know, the the pinks are nice too if you want pink, but uh, I personally prefer the peach color. And I think. The market generally does, you know, although finding the pink is more difficult. You know, the pink is generally out of Nigeria or Madagascar and much less availability than, than these peach colors that come from Mozambique. This one's not Madagascar? No, this one's Mozambique. It's not in the Caribbean area. It's uh, ignore that. This one is Mozambique for sure. So this stone, uh, praise value of $10,515. Our online price was $49.50 and $42.07 with the 15% off. So $160 a carat, which for this material coming out of Mozambique is very inexpensive. You know, we bought these right and 
was was thrilled with the purchases I got from this company that out of Bangkok. And Max asked how often we have these shows. Uh, Max, we try and do them once a month, and that is on the first Wednesday of the month in general. Um, but I do try to post uh, ahead of time on our YouTube channel. So if you go on our channel and you look at the upcoming live streams, you'll kind of see our schedule for these shows. Cool. And I think uh, in the other part of the parcel, we have uh, one emerald cut that's also available. That was really nice down to, you know, a little different cutting, uh, don't see as often in, in the Morganites. And next stone is a green tourmaline. Uh, kind of a little like the... Uh, the final oh. hidden gem, <laughs> Jeffrey. All right. Again, if you like this hidden gem and you're on the collection page of our sale on moregems.com, just refresh the page and it will magically appear. And the coupon code for this one is RARE25. <clears throat> so this is a little like the sapphire in that it is bicolor. Um, but this bicolor is caused by dichroism. I started to say that about the sapphire, but it definitely wasn't the reason for that bicolor. But dichroism in this stone, uh, tourmaline has dramatic dichroic colors, meaning that down one axis of the stone, in this case, will be strongly yellow-green, and down the other axis will be blue-green. So, you know, Commonly, when you cut this material, sometimes you try and accent the blue and and you make the yellow ends of it very steep cut so they don't reflect into the stone and you just get the blue-green because typically the blue-green is a higher value. Uh, but in this case, it, it creates a unique look in the stone, really gives you that bicolor look. and just makes a very satisfying gem. So this stone weighs 4.83 carat, uh, praise value 2,180 bucks. Uh, $1,490 is our online price. And with the 15% off, it's or 25% off this stone, it's $1,117. So $231 a carat. So, Again, a well-cut stone, clean, and and just a unique look to this bicolor tourmaline. So up next, after this last hidden gem, is a Malaya Garnet. You know, this is a very special stone. Again, this material that came out of Mahenge um, is a color range that didn't exist before uh, this particular source. You know, stones of this pink color, and, and the color of this stone is a little more peach than what this camera is showing. You know, it's not quite that intense pink color. Um, well, let's see. Uh, well, it does. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, let's see if we can show it. Uh, probably not against that white. Yeah, why did you know this one fluoresced? I don't know. They, they had these things, you know, they're calling them dragon garnets. And uh -huh. I think that color would fluoresce. And um, so it just kind of reminded me of Hard some of those. This light. I mean, you can but but it, see yeah, it. it's definitely got some fluorescence. There, there you, go. you go. And when, when you get it out of the light, it's dramatic. 
I don't know if I can afford to. So there you go. Off. There's a little bonus to this stone. Fluorescent garnet. Well, I guess we'll go all the way here. Can you see it? Whoop. <laughs> so Steve's showing you the fluorescence. I'm going to get my head out of the way. Though. But it is remarkably red, you know, is, is what the fluorescence on it is. You know, garnets, most garnets don't fluoresce. Uh, the Marilani mint garnets do fluoresce. And they're kind of red too, aren't they? And they're orangish. Yeah. They're like orangish. Yeah. This one fluoresces like a ruby does or a spinel, just a bright, um, shocking fuchsia red. So, something Steve just learned about this one. Yeah, that's not what's important about this. You know, it's just the beauty of this color. And again, Trust the online picture is really what that stone looks like. Uh, it's just not this pink. I mean, either color is great, but I prefer the, you know, the th this color of this stone. Again, if it were the sapphire, this would be a potparasha. You know, this would be uh, just uh, the, what do you call it, the, uh, the, uh, there's a name for it, but if if you were gonna typify what a pot parasha would look like, this would be a top top quality pot parasha if it were sapphire. So this is a pot parasha garnet. You know that that bit of peach to it. You know is is what brings this to a pot parasha color pink. It's really uh, orangish pink, making it a peach color. But anyway, as a garnet, it's a rare, fine gem. You know, and again, this material previous to this source did not exist in garnet. You know, the mahenge is what changed the value of garnets. Uh, it became so popular because of the colors that mahenge produced. Um all these lighter colors, you know, garnet typically has been known as uh, dark to over dark, you know, but the colors that came out of Mahenge were just uh, lighter pinks and lighter peaches, um, just a, a whole new color range for garnet. And this among the best of them. So this one weighs 3.06 carats. Um, Twenty six ten is the appraised price. Nineteen hundred and eighty dollars is our price online, and sixteen hundred and eighty three dollars with the fifteen percent off using the coupon code Jewel. So it's five hundred and fifty bucks a carat, uh, which, if you go back fifteen years, was a lot of money for a garnet. But man, these days garnet has become so so important in the business. You know, people finally realize that the beauty of garnet, I mean, it has a brilliance like a diamond and just a color range uh, unlike any other stone. Mahenge Malaya Garnet is what this typically is known as these days. Looks like we got a sale here, Jeff, huh? Yep. Um... Max had purchased the, he's the one asking the questions about it, but that cool amylite fossil. Oh, okay. Yes. Cool. Nice. Thanks, Max. Cool Thank you, Max. Piece. Um, thank you, Max. Uh, okay. Uh, can we start answering some questions? Sure. Okay. Uh, let's go through. Um, and <clears throat> before I get into it, Max just asked, um, before we ship it, which Max will uh, make sure it doesn't ship out. He wants to talk about a pendant for it. So okay. Um, so definitely, we something we'll uh, we'll reach out tomorrow with you about. But uh, yeah, it'd be a cool pendant though. Yeah, we've done some pretty cool amylite pendants, and I'm sure uh, our designer will have some stuff to show you. 
Yes. So we, yeah, um, just in case we forget, Max, maybe you can give us a call tomorrow. I'm going to email. You're going to email yeah, Alice. I'm going to email Alice okay. and Tracy. If we you know. don't contact you, Max, <laughs> get a hold of us. But Alice is real good about yep. it. As long as we get an email to her, Doing she'll, it right now. she'll be on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So some questions. And if anybody has questions, Steve loves answering them. This is your time to ask whatever about the jewelry industry. Um, I'm going to go through some questions that came in through chat, that came in through email, that are all over the place. So if you have them now, post them in the uh, YouTube chat box and uh, we'll get answering those. So one question. Um, Glenna wanted to know, um, I think we just, we showed a Yellowstone um, and she thought it was tourmaline, but what was the Yellowstone that we showed? A yellow sapphire and a yellow tanzanite. Okay, so two stones. The oval stone, the three carat uh, um, fancy tanzanite was kind of slightly greenish yellow. And there was a maybe a little over a carat yellow, a carat 44 yellow sapphire. Okay. And I think I have a two carat yellow sapphire also in my stock. Yeah, I'm trying um, to look back the last, yeah. Yeah, the emerald cut was the sapphire, correct? Yeah. And then, uh, well, the... Yeah. Okay. And I guess running into to thing all things yellow, um, I had somebody ask if we could show the yellow oval heliodor. Do we have that available to show or not? Um, it's part of the 15% off sale. But I'm not, yeah, yeah, it's right here. That is the that is a six carat forty. Uh, praise price eleven twenty six seven ninety online. So that figures to. Calculator was working. Seven ninety. I don't know. Seven hundred ish. <laughs> okay, that one's focused. All right. Put it on your hand real quick. Put it on my hand. So there's a 624 carat. Yep, there's the one you showed. Yeah, that's nice. All right. And Glenna, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, going through all these. Okay, and they're okay. So, all right. Um, the we talked about earlier. Sorry, I'm jumping around here. We talked about earlier because two people mentioned those two pear shaped cabochon opal gem. Um, they got the same picture. Uh. But can we show what the 9.52 carats actually looks like and the 15.74 carat. Well, the video is the same too, or? Uh, I believe so. Oh, really? Um, let me see here. Okay, there's that one. I thought I had them out. 
No, the videos are different. They're just very similar. Yeah, they're similar stones. Maybe they are. Well, maybe they were correct. No, no, it is because the same red little tail there on the right hand side. So, so I think the video. So, if anybody's questioning those, we'll get it fixed. But the video is specific to each stone. So this is the nine fifty two. That's the nine fifty two. And fifteen seventy four. Whoop. Fifteen seventy four. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Michael likes the right one. <laughs> I think you've mentioned that before in the past yeah, videos. I probably would, yeah, like... I think I'd say I like the right one, but I like the the left one's pleasing to me yeah, too, though. Yeah. So shown Both here, the left is the nine, uh, nine fifty two, nine fifty two, and the right is fifteen seventy four. Fifteen seventy four. Yeah. Both great stones, you know. Def definitely different color patterns. You know, one's closer. It's not really Harlequin, but it's a broader flash. Uh, Michael, you you may be a Harlequin. Is that Harley Quinn, you know, the in the DC? Isn't that Harley Quinn? Isn't that her name? Does that have any relation to like the colors in this? It's a good question. I don't know. I, I'm not a big, you know, DC person, but Harley Quinn and then Harlequin seems Harlequin. kind of coincidental. And Harley Quinn kind of has all the colors and everything all over. Yeah, Harlequin is like, it's it's like broader patches and usually more defined than these are, not so freeform. They're more like a picket fence kind of, that's not a accurate, but it's it's a particular pattern that this is not Harlequin, but. I don't know if there's any DC fans yeah. out there. Well, there's, yeah. the, ah. I could sit and look at those forever because they're both beautiful stones. Yeah, and, yeah, that's... You know, I'm just sitting there going, whoa, look at that. Yeah, uh, yeah that's anyway. definitely cool. Yeah, yeah. Both great stones. But hopefully, I mean, I, 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 you know, I love Opal. I mean, when we went to the Opal Mines in, uh, yeah. Yeah. Was it Nevada, yeah. yeah, that was like, I think, I don't know. I just love being out there digging and breaking open into the Opals and everything. Those are, yeah. Yeah, it was exciting. So, um, we're gonna do it again. I'm waiting for the invite. Yeah, go you guys back keep to doing Nevada. Stuff while I'm in a different, you know, skiing or something. <laughs> uh, okay, some more questions. We'll go through here. Um, Dan asked. I think this is another jeweler, but he's asking, "Do you think it's okay to sell Moroccan amethyst as so, or is it trademarked?" Who's um, not I, Moroccan. Moroccan amethyst uh, listed or as so? Can you list it as Moroccan amethyst or is it trademarked? I think this came up from the Zoltanite talk and everything. Okay, um, I'm not sure what Moroccan amethyst is. I've seen some Moroccan amethyst. It's kind of um, the yeah, crystals uh, are kind of zoned. Country source you can use. I don't. They can't. They can't trademark any country source. So. The name of a country is is fair game. So. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's go back here. Um, 
know there were some. Let's see. Uh, James wants to know, have we ever sold or cut any jadeite? Uh, I don't know or understand jadeite, so I, I have cut it and I have sold some. But, you know, jadeite's real difficult to ID. Um, takes uh, some specific equipment to identify the treatments involved. And I don't have it, and I don't uh, understand it enough to to deal in it. So we generally avoid jade. Okay. So. Um, will we ever show or do we ever sell any star or cat's eye gems? Yeah, we've had some cat's eye moonstones. I probably still do have some cat's eye moonstones. Um, I have a few star sapphires, um, some pinkish. I have one pinkish. I'm trying to think what else I have. That's cat's eye. I have cat's eye appetite. Um, so occasionally, um, but it's not a real strong market, so I haven't gone after it much. But I enjoy it, and I and I. I look for it, but there's not a lot of stars, and particularly star sapphire at this time. You know, the problem with star sapphire is the good ones, they can heat them, turn them into transparent material, which has more value and facet it. So the availability of star sapphires is significant less than it used to be. Even the grays, the grays, I just sent one off for treating, and it did turn blue, but uh, it fractured quite a bit. So, you know, uh, you can turn even the grays blue. And what causes the, the star or the, the eye? Uh, it is rutile. It is rutile needles that, that form uh, exactly opposite of what the star is because it um, the needles that run in one direction, the, the line will form perpendicular to it. So there is three sets of rutile needles in the stone that produce the star. All right. That was my own question there. I always, oh, okay. <laughs> um, a few people have asked this. A lot of people went after that, uh, that zircon that you talked about. I know I've, I've, um, a few people are responding. We have other Zircon, um, on our site. Um, is there any, do, I, I doubt we did have any like matching or close to that Zircon that we sold today. Uh, we, I do have, yes. Yeah. There, I'm not sure what I have, but I have some incredibly colored ones, you know, not round, but mostly ovals and, We'll see ovals. Ovals? You know, okay. So um, there, and there probably are some that aren't online. If it's something you're interested in, uh, get a hold of us and, and I'll try and show you what I have. Yeah. You can go on our website and just, um, there's a form for contact us. And then if you're interested in, um, like Steve said, the Zircon, just send us an email and we'll get back to you. Um, let's see, uh, uh, where are the, the opal or Al gold prospecting wants to know, um, where the opals came from that we showed earlier, uh, from Ethiopia. Okay. Easy question. Easy answer. Um, Amy wants to know where you got your passion for gemstones and where you got your education. <laughs> uh, passions for gemstones. Uh, age 13, uh, the only full color um, dream that I still remember uh, was me in a cave following a stream, picking up these brightly colored rocks, gems they were. You know, and that's where I often say it started because it, it's just one of those dreams I would never forget. And, you know, I've always had an interest in rocks and collecting rocks. And um, so 
You know, it wasn't until my brother uh, got into the business and I was at school and he sent me stones and I'd show them to the art department and, and go to sell the art department. The gems he was uh, bringing in from India is where I really got started. And then I started on the road for him selling to jewelers across the USA. What was the rest of the question? That was a good answer. I never that knew was about it. that dream before. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 I mean, it's still vivid in my mind. You know, not too many dreams do I remember being full color. I mean, occasionally it happens, but this one was just full color. So you, so you really followed your dreams? I followed my dreams. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> dreams do come true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Say a lot. Okay. Sorry, Nance. Yeah, it's the dream's fault. Yeah. <laughs> Um, sometimes my wife has mixed feelings about the business because it's business, you know, business is not all fun. And, you know, even though there's a lot of fun in this business, there's still trials and tribulations and I've put her through a few of them. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with me, dear. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still cool that, you know, this was a passion of yours at a young age. Yes. And then you got to turn that into a very successful business. Yeah. Thanks. Um, next part of that question, I guess, is, okay, so I know you didn't get your education from your dreams. So how did you, I guess, turn that dream into a reality and, you know, educate yourself with the stones? Well, mostly it was educating myself, yes. You know, it was a brother getting me into the business, me going on the road selling, and I read everything I could, you know, all the trade journals and you know, I, I, it just, you know, just uh, the education came from showing the stones and learning what I could. And, and mainly the show and tell with jewelers is, is where I learned the business. And a little travel overseas helped a lot, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Did that quite a bit. Yep. Did that quite a bit in the past more than I do now, but I'm trying to get back to it. And we're trying to get a trip together to Tanzania later this year. And, and hopefully that can happen. You know, the price of tickets may, it seems to be coming down. So still pretty uh, high. Yeah. Instead of 20,000 for the three of us to go, it's down to 10,000, maybe no 12,000, just still crazy money, but yeah. It's an important trip and, you know, good for our psyche and good for business and, you know, and hopefully you find some stuff that's worthwhile. All right. Um, we get this question quite a bit and, you know, we should probably bring it up more often, but um, can you tell us about the machine you use to cut and what <clears throat> is, is it, this, is it um, a good machine for a beginner? Well, it, I use the Ultratech V5 is the current machine of choice. Um, basically, uh, it's back here behind me. I guess it's the other shoulder. Nope, it's over there. <laughs> and uh, it, it's what I currently use to cut everything. Um, and is it a good machine for beginner? It's the right machine for the beginner. Unfortunately, it's expensive for a beginner. You know, because the machine I have is a little over $5,000 now. There is one that's very similar that Ultratech makes that's $1,000 less than that. Yes, a big investment, but the best investment you could make if you really want to be a cutter to try and learn on a used machine or a, a lower quality machine will just become frustration. You know, you, if you have a high quality machine, it makes everything easier. It makes your first cut a great cut. You know, maybe not your first cut, but you'll easily become a good cutter when you use the right machine because the machine does a lot of what's required for you. You know, you just have to control the machine. It's not you're trying to control a machine that can't do what you want it to do, which I have dealt with many machines like that. And and uh, this is the right way to start. If you can afford to uh, get into the right machine, it's going to make life a whole lot different than, than if you 
you know, you go out and buy a $500 used machine, good luck. You know, you're going to just put that in the basement and, you know, you're going to quit real quick because you're going to find that your talent and the ability of the machine is just not going to produce something of quality. You know, I could go to a old machine that doesn't work quite right and I could cut something because I know what I'm doing and I know how to manipulate a machine to make it do what I want it to do. But for a beginner, that's just not possible. Okay. And then we have, if you go to moregems.com and go under guides um, and you click on fastening machines, Steve does have an unboxing video of uh, the V5, correct? Yes. Yes. So and, you can learn and, about it there and um, shows you how to purchase yeah, it and everything and a, too. And a lot of videos on how to cut, which will help you too. You know, I am a rep for the company, so I am uh, paid a commission when when uh, there's a sale. So if you have an interest in buying one, appreciate you mention our name and we'll get a commission and we'll give you a piece of rough to, to uh, start with. To start with, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. And I had no idea, but we still have some more stones left, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> I'm just going through questions. Here. Okay. Let, let's go on to the next stone. All right. We'll answer you can some bring other some ones questions up. later. Yeah. So the next one is a Spessor type garnet. Uh, this particular garnet, um, is a color I haven't had in a long time. Um, this color I used to buy in Madagascar. Um, when I was traveling there, my last trip to Madagascar was 2008. Um, and I was lucky to, I probably bought maybe 15, 20 stones that looked like this from Madagascar. You know, they weren't real commonly available, but they did come up on occasion. So it's a, a unique color. It's a color you don't see from Nigeria or um, Tanzania. Sometimes you'll see this color. Um, yeah, I can't remember seeing it actually. Tanzania produces the real bright, um, orange, tangerine orange color typically, you know, so this, this is what I expect from Madagascar and really a beautiful color, a lot of brilliance, uh, Spessor type garnets again, have that real high refractive index like a zircon. So you get a, a beautiful brilliance out of these stones. Well, I can't find the focal range of this. Anyway, really bright stone. Um, trust the, the pictures online more than you're trusting this picture we're showing, but um, just a, a really nice, clean stone, bright stone. And a good size, just over five carat, which in garnets is a pretty good size stone. So this stone, uh, praise price on this is thirty three ninety nine. Uh, twenty four seventy five is the price online. Twenty one oh four with the fifteen percent off using coupon code Jewel. So when they call some of these specertites Fanta color, uh -huh. what would that, uh, would you be able to describe that? Or is it something that you only can see and know? Well, Fanta is Fanta orange like the pop, which is the Tanzanian material. Okay. That's what uh, I was thinking when you were describing that bright orange. Yes, I would consider that, that more Fanta, Fanta. Fanta color. Yes. After the pop? Yeah. I think so. Really? I don't know that Fanta means anything other than Fanta orange pop. I, <laughs> I'm not sure. You know, did they get that name from some orange Fanta? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. If anybody like, knows, like let the, me know. Yeah. Fanta, Fanta. Yeah. Fanta, Fanta orange Fanta. pop yeah. is what I know. And it's, yeah. Um. Before we go to the next stone, can we, uh, Angela wanted to know if we could see that Portuguese cut tanzanite again. The, uh, um, the um, hidden gem? Uh, she said Portuguese cut, Probably. or maybe not, maybe it's, it's the It's not a full brilliant. Portuguese. 
Well, no, it's a Portuguese pavilion. Oh. Brilliant crown is what this has. Ah. But it it does has the brilliance like a Portuguese round. Oh, yes, that first one, that first hidden gem, yes. Yeah. 25% off, too. Not bad. What's that bring that uh, per carat? A three seventy five. The pleasing stone. And you want to know if it is it too big for a ring? No. I, I, it's it's such a common size we do for rings that personally I can't. It, it's not too big for a ring in my mind, but it's more your mind that, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, it's not a, it's, it's not a huge stone. Oop. It'll make a big ring, but it it's not too big for a ring, no. Jeremy Harley said hi. Hi, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> he said he remembers you since you were like 13. Jeremy Harley. said you showed him M, uh, Jeremy Harley. You showed him, uh, uh, you were the first one to show him Rwanda Amethyst. Ah, uh, Okay. All right, Jeremy. I, you, I don't remember you, Jeremy. Sorry, but you know I appreciate you remembering us, and you know glad you enjoyed the Rwanda amethyst. That hasn't been too long ago, maybe six, seven years, maybe. So, yeah. Well, Rwanda was twenty fifteen. I bet if you came in, he'd remember you. Though. Yes. Yeah. Faces are easier than Come names. on back in. He calls me Michael all the time, so it's all right. <laughs> okay, where's the next stone? I got everything mixed up here. There it is. Another rare one. This is a Marilani Mint Garnet. Uh, rare because of its size. You know, uh, stones over three carat in Marilani Mint are quite difficult to come up with. And this one weighs 4.52 carat. This is a nice clean stone other than the dust on it. That night, nice minty blue green color. Well, oh, really? Well, I remember that, Jeremy. I don't know. Jeremy, were you the artist? There was a Jeremy that really, really did nice artwork. Uh, so this Marilani Mint Garnet, this is a byproduct of the tanzanite mining. Um, they're found in the same holes. and So uh, this particular stone, appraised price of 11526 bucks. You know, this is the same basic stone as Savarite Garnet. You know, just a little different color. Uh, but it's a grossular garnet, um, which which the tanzanite mines produce some savorite also, but mostly this uh, lighter, minty, uh, blue-green color. Uh, praise price eleven thousand five twenty-six. Our online price of eighty-two eighty, and uh, with the fifteen percent off, it's seven thousand thirty-eight dollars. And this is a pretty big for a uh, mint garnet, too. Yeah, huh? I can't. Well, I sold bigger once, <laughs> like a 13 carat, but 
You know, they don't, this is an uncommon size. You know, carrot and a half, two carrot, you can find them. And even that is a little more difficult these days. There's just not much production of this material now. Goes a little bit in spurts. You know, they find it uh, with the tanzanite and sometimes they find uh, a small pocket of it and it's available for a while. Uh, but it's been quite some time that uh, we've seen much availability of this material. So yes, a big stone for, for Marilani Mint Garnet. Anything oh, yeah. It's pretty hard. Yeah, it's good, tough stone. Yeah. Uh, I suppose I could. <laughs> Come on, I want to see that fluorescence. Michael's into fluorescence. And Chris, if you're out there, we know you're into fluorescence. Uh, lost my light. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chris is always posting some really amazing fluorescent minerals. He's getting, mm. he's always on, uh, I think, Mindat's photo of the day. Isn't that what it yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. He's been getting photo of the day for so, weeks. Yeah, nice months, job, Chris. Years. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I lost the light. Oh. So these oh, mint tasty. garnets will also fluoresce. It's more of an orangish yellow usually. Oh, Got to get it in. Now. And he's using a uh, long wave UV flashlight. So it's just uncommon that garnets fluoresce at all. So you've seen the. Probably the only, well, not the only ones. Yeah, it probably is the only ones I've seen that fluoresce. Yeah, the the Mahinge material that came that's coming out currently. There's a couple of sources that are producing fluorescent materials that are probably similar combinations of of uh, materials in the garnets. Got any, got another question? And I forgot to bring them. So, you know, when I was packing or moving stuff around, because we're like moving, I found two stones that must have been from a long time ago. One was an opal, but it looked like it was dried up. But I'll have to I, did I bring that one in. I may have. I'll have to show you afterwards. Then I found a cut one, which was like a star. It, no, it was like it was a shape. It was a citrine. Um, oh, with a star on the back? Well, it was almost like a, is it a star or like a hex I found? I think that one's in my car, but I was going to yeah. show you. Yeah, just moving stuff around. I was sending them pictures of like unopened garbage pail kid things and everything that <laughs> yeah. I was talking about. <laughs> you had like 50 packs of un unopened garbage pail kids. Yeah, it was crazy. I, I mean, I think the, I, is, is the gum yeah. any good in there, you think? Well, I remember back in the day when I was, dad would... Um, if I hit like 10 free throws in a row and made each shot, then he'd like buy me a pack of garbage bail kids. <laughs> so I've saved quite a bit. The gum's still in them hard as a rock, but they're all unopened. But, um, anyway, I digress. but anyway, yeah, I'll have to show you those afterwards that I found. I'll have to show you my garbage pail kid NFTs I've got. Oh, okay. I bet <laughs> you do. Yeah. Um, okay. So let me, um. Go through here real quick. Um, there was a discussion, James and Amy were talking about the garnets when they dig holes. Are they coming? Do ants bring them up? That's the uh, Arizona pyropes. Yes. Chrome pyropes. Chrome pyrope garnets. Yeah, yes. they call them ant hill garnets because the ant hills are red because they brought up these small particles of garnet, which is kind of how you find them. You know, and we saw the same thing up at the sunstone mines. You know, you look at the anthills and they got all these little sunstones in them. And yeah. So okay. the uh, gem miners, the ants. <laughs> yeah. What can we do with that? But, um, okay. So have you ever cut a could crown a, of light? Could be a what? kid's uh, cartoon. <laughs> What, a whole bunch of ants? Yeah, bringing up gems. They could be little gem miners and 
yeah. showing the other ants the gems they found. You could somehow yeah. control the ants. <laughs> Is this a new project you're you're working on there yeah, on the yeah, side? New, yeah, I'll write a book. All right. Ant Hill Garnets. The Ant Hill Garnet Kids. Okay, Jeff. Next question. <laughs> Don't think too much about that. Um, have you ever cut a crown of light? Crown of light. I don't know what that is. So no, <laughs> no. Is that a type of cut, or I guess it's a type of cut? Yeah, it's a type of cut. Um, yeah. No, I don't. I don't know it. All right. Send it to me. I'll Big see Drew, if, it's if, worthwhile. You, if you know what it is or what it looks like, you know, yeah. let us know and we can take a look. If I a lot like of times it, I'll probably, try and cut it. I try to cut it. Ooh, that could be a new. That could be a. Uh, Kind of a uh, contest yeah. or a thing. So it's you probably can... one of those with 350 facets. And... <laughs> no thanks. Okay, uh, continue with cutting. I know you've done this before, but um, is there any? Have you ever recut a stone whose cut is meh, um, and then it came out amazing <laughs> afterwards? Sure. You know, but a lot of problems with recuts. The lo- loss is great. Usually 30%. You recut a stone, you know, it's a 10 carat stone, you get a seven carat, would be typical. So recutting doesn't always work, but recutting always makes a better stone for sure. Okay. Can't think of anything offhand that I recut that, yeah, there's there's been many, but. Nothing that rings a bell. All right. I remember some some previous shows you talked about, you know, I recut this and and it ended up looking like an amazing stone. I'm not sure what it looked like beforehand, but yeah, definitely something. Yeah, there. there's, you know, 80% of all the stones out there need to be recut because they're windowed or they're just not polished correctly. And, you know, just, uh, and, and a lot of cutters make a living recutting and a lot of overseas cutters for sure. <laughs> You know, you just got to buy the stone cheap enough that it's worthwhile that you can lose 30% and and still make money. Okay. And going back to an earlier conversation, I don't know if it's Michael or Mikkel. Um, he's from Denmark, and he says they have a pop there called Fanta, and it's it's Fanta, Fanta, and it's quite bright orange too. So I think it's probably the same that we have. We don't, you know, there's not much of it out here, but it's not as popular, but... Um. Uh, there's another one here. Uh, I guess a question for me, well for Michael. Um, now I, I found out that you kind of started cutting. I did. I've got uh, half a stone cut. I wasn't able to get it done for this show. Um, there's just too many things going on, but uh, here. He promises for next show. Yeah, here you can show the. Uh, there's not much to see uh, on it, but um, I got the pavilion cut. It's a Baya amethyst from. Oh, that camera's not working. Is it? Uh, yeah, don't. Uh, but, anyways, I'm working on it. So, it's a Portuguese pavilion. The stone was real deep, so. What's going to be the crown? He's going to have to cut half of it away. Because this will be the crown side. There we go. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, of course, it's my my first try here. So um, still a work in progress. But I think once it's done, it'll look nice. So the pavilion is the bottom part of the stone is down here inside the dot and this will be the crown that'll be the table of the stone and again half of what you see up here is gonna he's gonna just cut it away because there's just too much there but he's doing a really good job i mean if you look at the size of the facets they all match real well but he's using the ultratech v5 and you know, for, you know, somebody that's just starting, it's the machine that uh, will help you cut a great stone. And you'll see next show, this will be a beautiful stone. I'm confident that he has it in him. 
It's in the genes, which I do believe is is true. I've cut, taught a lot of cutters, and you know, there's a lot of people that just don't have it and just can't really cut. And you know, but Michael has the talent, and Jeff's talked about it, doing it, especially during COVID. I think he got bored and no, talked about cutting. Either. Yeah, we don't live so yeah. far away. We may have to talked about doing like a. Uh... FaceTime or something, and then if I had one where I'm at, and then it's just hard to. Yeah, yeah, just, it'd be cool. I mean, yeah, just yeah. it just seems like you can get lost in it and just. Yeah, it's know. rewarding, you know, particularly when you finish and get to look at what you've created. Uh, there is a, there is a real reward to it. So, we'll see this stone next month. Any tips, Michael, on? Uh, with your first stone that you can tell others? Um, well, uh, it's it, probably a good idea if your dad's a gem cutter. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. We do have videos out there, right? Yeah, no, yeah. those yeah. videos, like I've edited all those videos and watched them probably over and over again. So a lot of the things that I was doing, I already knew because I've watched and edited those videos over and over. So, I mean dopping it up and uh doing the transfer that was all like i just knew how to do that um as far as cutting it it's honestly once you start doing it it's kind of i don't know you see what starts happening as you're doing it and you start understanding how the machine works because trying to visualize it without using a machine it's kind of difficult but um once I started doing it, you know, I see I screwed up somewhere. I could see how it affects the previous rows or the next rows that are coming. And I guess I'm just learning that way. And, and of course, this is, I've only got the pavilion done, so I haven't done it very much. So I don't have a lot of tips, but mm-hmm. it's definitely doable. And I think it is going to be rewarding. And I'm excited to see what, what, uh, what it turns out into be. It's just finding the time to do it. There's so much stuff going on here. Uh, which is great, but um, yeah, I think it's a it's a great hobby or uh, something that you can turn into a business. But definitely recommend getting a quality piece of equipment because it's pretty sweet knowing that it's just going to work and it's not me that's screwing up or or it's not the machine that's screwing up. It would be me. Um, so once you know that's a constant, then you can kind of go from there. And are are you using the? The V5 or what are you? Yes. Yeah. I also, that, um, that new unboxing video we did was my new Ultratech V5. Okay. I have the digital angle display or digital angle dial. I think they call it. Um, and it works pretty well too. And just kind of figuring out how that all works is it's really interesting and, and fun. And, uh, the hard part is going to be once I get into some tougher rough judging the rough, buying the rough, figuring out where the inclusions are going to go and trying to get the best yield without having too much waste. Because as you could see there, if that was any other material other than amethyst, that'd be a lot of waste. But uh, it's amethyst, so I'm not to worry about it. Why would there be a lot more waste? Uh, If you look at it, there's a lot of material I'm going to have to cut off from the crown there. So that's basically you're throwing away money doing that. So... um, in the future, it would be kind of either doing a different cut or trimming it or finding a different piece of rough to pick out to get the best yield. But amethyst is relatively inexpensive. So, you know, cutting a little bit more away is not as um, important okay. as, say, if it was tanzanite. Be a little more detrimental. If yes. You yeah, yeah. I think every so, carrot counts. With it. <laughs> so, yeah. So do you have a like a greater appreciation for Steve's cutting now? That oh yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, I mean it's it's not easy, and when you know something screws up, or you screw up a previous facet, or you're pushing too hard, and something somehow you get a scratch on the previous row of facets, you got to go back, and it's it's a whole thing. But I think it's just also getting to learn the machine, how much pressure needs to be applied, how the laps are cutting. and um, It'll be a learning curve, but definitely doable. All right. And I kind of punished him, making him cut.
cut a Portuguese round. Oh, in 61 facets, so. That's a great cut, though. Yeah, it is a great cut. Yeah, it'll be nice. All right. Thanks, Mywo. I'm excited to see it. We're going to have it for the next show? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> if not, it'll be a different we'll stuff. We better. You got it for, you got at least a month. Yeah. Right? All right, uh, a couple more questions here. Um, If you got questions, please post them now. We're getting to the end. Um, When you were talking about your business, Steve, and coming through, um, you know, through the education and your passion and everything, um, what are some, um, maybe some mistakes you made along the way or some regrets that you've had? I know in the past you've talked about like, wish I would have picked up more of this rough or this stone when it came out. I mean, are those like your biggest regrets or is there anything that you would have done differently? Oh, that's a tough question there, Jeff. Um, things I'd have done differently. Well, I wouldn't have stayed on the road as long as I did. You know, I was traveled on the road selling wholesale for 25 years, you know, which missed a lot of you guys' early years and you know, it was great when I got home, but uh, I spent a lot of time on the road. And that's probably my greatest regret is being away from home so much. I do remember seeing you more when we, when you got the store and everything here. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. I wasn't gone five days a week. And, you know, so... I still turned out fine. That's all good. Yeah, yeah. Everybody turned out fine. Yeah. And yeah uh, it, it worked out okay. But Thanks, Mom. It was tough on Nancy. <laughs> yeah. Tough tough on her. And I got to sit in a hotel at night, and she had to take care of two kids and mow the lawn and with you on her back. And <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah. So, but other than that, I, I'm sure there's other regrets. And like you say, you know, missing or well, not buying the rough that was available, but that was a, didn't have the money thing. Not a, not, I made a mistake and didn't do it. I just didn't have enough money to do it. So, uh, okay. Well, that's a good answer. Um, jumping from there, uh, uh, sentimental one to some regular questions here. Um, so you're using the V5 right now to cut. What was the first machine you learned to cut on? MDR, um, which was a real piece of work. Just MDR? because I, I've talked about it okay. before, you know, they were they were not set up right. And this is the same thing I talk about when you buy a used machine. You don't. You're not a machinist. You don't know what's wrong with the machine. And what your problems are compared to what the machine just is incapable of doing. And the machines I bought were not set up right. They, you know, I had to cheat every facet and, you know, just thought that was normal. And it wasn't normal. It was just a bad machine, you know. And as I've said, you know, I became the greatest cheater on the planet because I had to cheat every facet. Meaning every time you cut a facet, went to polish it. You had to adjust the machine to get it to polish that facet. Whereas you use the V5, you cut a facet and go back to it, and it polishes it right on the money. You know, you don't have to adjust the machine to get it to work. You know, and that's the big advantage of a, a quality machine. You know, reproducibility is is the important thing. Like the fat, the the cut Michael's doing 161 facets. If you have to cheat every one of those facets, it takes you a week to cut the stone. You know, whereas you can do that stone in four or five hours in a Portuguese round. All right. Um, and Jeremy said, yes, he is the artist. Ah, well, you're a pretty amazing artist. You know, I appreciate your work and... Uh, you should be designing jewelry or that's probably not the best place for your talents, but yeah. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you have to stop by sometime and show us some more of your artwork. And, you know, I think, uh, you'd be a great jewelry designer. You know, I don't know designing's in it for you, but you definitely have the artistic talent. Yeah. He, he wanted to know, um, 
He's currently cutting a Lodar Sapphire, and the stone's getting so hot, and he's burning his fingers. What is the solution to that? Uh, it's something, it's what you're polishing with, I guess. You know, it's because uh, if you polish with a bat lap with diamond, they won't get hot. They don't get hot at all. So I'm not sure what you're polishing on. It just, um, you know, contact me and tell me what you're doing and I'll tell you what's wrong. All right. And um, the person that asked about your first machine, um, I'm, I'm guessing it's a it's a him, but I'm just um, he used a Graves Mark IV. Never used one, so yeah. I don't know what it's like. Okay. All right. So um, everyone, um, hopefully you enjoyed the show. If you like any of the stones, um, they are available still, fifteen to twenty five percent off. You can go to moregems.com. And again, we have credit card. You can do financing, um, free charge up to six months. We also have PayPal. Um, I am going to be sending out an email. Some people asked um, if we'll be doing an email tomorrow with all these deals. I will be sending out an email. So, and that's going to go to um, probably almost 10,000 people. So, if you do like any of the stones tonight, I urge you to purchase before, I'll probably get it out around noon tomorrow um before then um and um yeah i think uh, another good show um what <laughs> yes okay cool yeah thanks All right, everybody folks. for coming remember shop online at moregems.com we want to thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to get alerts for when we go live also, check out the video links at the bottom of this stream. Uh, that's going to do us for us tonight. I'm Steve Moriarty. Keep on jamming.